scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You must receive seed and it must yield a harvest. Lift your voice and pray. A harvest whose profit will appear unto all. Are you praying? Please don't be distracted. Pray, pray. Don't look around. Pray. Shabakato Sekatelekata. I speak to the soil of my spirit. Sekos Kaparos Katebakatosh. You receive the word of God and you yield a hundredfold. I declare you receive the word of God and you yield a hundredfold. You receive the word of God. We release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh. I release the sound of the heavens, sound of creation, Yahweh is me. I release the sound of the heavens, the sound of creation, Yahweh is me. I cry holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. I sing holy, holy, holy unto Yeshua. be seated holy spirit we have come before you tonight we cry for understanding there is nothing we can know except you open up our understanding lord i pray for those here and the thousands of people around the nations of the earth following i pray that your word will prevail in a mighty way tonight for your suit he's not looking for your tie all that is nonsense what will he do with your suit and your tie He's not even looking for your destiny. He knows that anything minus the word is equal to nothing. 
for nothing was made that was not made by him are we together now the bible says in the beginning listen carefully it didn't say in the beginning was a formula in the beginning was the word and that word was with god and that word was god he said he was with god in the beginning then he says through him all things were made and he says nothing including a destiny nothing was made that was not by him so satan knows that the making factor in men's lives is the word so when he comes to this gentleman he doesn't have any business with your tie or whatever he looks for where the word is and the bible says satan cometh immediately if satan steals the word from you you will pass him and he will pass you he has no business with you again it is the one thing that he will seek and fight for show me a man my brothers and my sisters listen very carefully no matter what satan has done in your life if the word of god can come upon you if the word of god can be understood and received and diligently applied with faith you will make nonsense out of the devil it's only a matter of time is someone getting what i'm saying because you see we have to be careful church people right now don't grow again because we are used to the religious activity of the world we come and sit down and our bibles we are writing notes that can change our lives but there is a demon of religion sitting on people many people have written their miracles in their jota and yet they remain in bondage many have written the formula for their lifting and yet it looks like heavens are closed many have written the formula for their prosperity many have written the formula that will wipe the tears of their family the bible says ever learning but never coming to the knowledge of the truth so don't get used to religion oh it's time for the word oh yeah let's judge acts chapter this we write if it's a nice word you say mm, preach preacher and all those kinds of things we share the grace and people go back and nothing changes let me tell you religion is a demon it's not just a wrong philosophy i believe there is a spirit of religion that makes people hang around god but never benefit from him are we together now yes you can get so used to the i invited sister a i invited brother b and you sit down and don't get blessed yourself or i am a worker you can be standing behind the mic singing when i raise a song and the revelation that can transform your destiny comes and you sing it out of your life while you are not listening and focusing so we have to be sensitive my brothers and my sisters god is not a magician there is an exact way men are raised in this kingdom can you cry in one minute again and say i cause distraction from my life lord whatever it is that makes that i do not understand you can imagine how brilliant people are but the moment the word comes they become unfruitful to it that means it's an attack i don't believe anybody here is dull some of us academically speaking we are very sound people but the moment it comes to the issue of the word, there is an attack. Please pray. Please pray. Please pray. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This kingdom life that we are living is a supernatural life. And it's a life that will continue to call for contention. That is the reason why you can finish an encyclopedia but not be able to read 100 pages from your Bible. What is so difficult about this thing that you cannot read is because there is a spirit behind it. I can give you a novel that is twice this page and some of you will finish it in one week and you don't have time. It's not that you sit down and you will keep reading and within one week you are done but you pick this to read and see what happens you will it will be a miracle if you cross 10 pages of this doesn't matter what part that means there is a spirit that opens this for you it's amazing how you can sit down and open your bible and open side by side with even a christian book and you would rather read the christian book 
nothing is wrong with it you are reading it but just to sit and read this one raw every demon from hell will fight you because this word you see let me tell you whether you understand what he's saying or not the moment your eyes make contact with this word something starts happening to your spirit and that's the reason why when the word of god is about being taught somebody who already slept in the afternoon the spirit of slumber just comes on the person you see that as soon as the service is over he can stand behind a car and discuss politics for two hours so it was never about tiredness it was about an attack on the word you heard the testimony of the dear lady here she came and sat down as soon as praise and worship was over the fire from the praise and worship made those spirits you see evil spirits are real please let's 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 not fool ourselves let us know this world we live in we are not alone are we together that you sit down from the start to the finish of a service is a miracle it's a sign that god is doing something in your life you see people you see what happens during miracle service the moment prayers are about to offer you want to ease yourself you want to do something ah, i feel uncomfortable it's a lie it's an agitation these spirits are seeing beyond dimensions that your eyes can see so they know what is happening in the realm of the spirit as the power of god is about to be released and they will cause every discomfort some of you who drag people here to come and repent notice how well behaved they are as soon as the praise and worship starts they just say I, I, i'm tired i want to go it's a lie they are not tired the spirit that needs to be casted out you see that let me tell you my brothers and my sisters if someone invites you here and you ever get to this ground or connect it's a sign that your miracle has started because the kind of attack you try it one day and you will see that somebody who would ordinarily give you money will say sorry i don't have any money for anything just to leave kaduna and come it's an attack are we together now but you have a responsibility to refuse the will of man is respected even by demons yes sir if god respects your will then every other force on earth must respect your will if they usurp your will they manipulated you in a way that allowed them to find expression i set before you life and death i set before you blessing and cursing i can't force you i can only advise you choose life you don't choose life just by verbalizing it you choose life by paying the price to sit down and do the things that minister life are we together help us tonight holy spirit in the name of jesus some of you here need to go on a project just gather strategic koinonia messages that relate to certain areas in your life the media will be more than glad to help you are we together you put these teachings together and you go on a word fast let me tell you what that means you will eat there are many kinds of fasting most people only know the one that you suspend eating for 12 hours or some days but there is a way you can go on a movie fast that means you off every movie you can go on a phone fast off your phone it's, it's a way of fasting are we together and then you can have time for the word that the only thing your ear hears for a whole day is a message not somebody calling you ah how are you mm -mm. the only thing that you hear aside from bikes driving themselves out is the word of god you sit down and say lord my life must change what is the key you hear one message you hear part of the key it can be a message you've always had but now because you are giving god your attention fire comes from heaven and that's it you catch something you will come out of that place knowing that i've gotten this when you say it, they will laugh at you until the results bail you out please give your destiny time you heard what the dear lady said wonderful lady by the way i'm busy nobody is busy it's a lie we are looking for something nobody is busy if you're on your way going to kaduna this night and i say hold on somebody wants to give you one million are you busy talk to me no 
so the idea of being busy means i have not yet come to an understanding that the word of god is profitable so please let me leave it aside while i look for the things that look profitable nobody leaves what gives you profit so if you do not have time for the word it's a revelation it's a sign that in your dealings with god you have not been quickened to a point where you have seen the value and the profitability of the word of god so you can throw away the word of god and watch film i'm, I'm not please don't get me wrong i'm not against movies but i'm telling you there is a devil out there that is demeaning the power of the word of god and we choke all kinds of things in our heads and we teach spirits come create fortifications and then this is what we say because we believe that just hanging around the word of god will produce result we will get angry and say i've done everything i know to do you see that i've done everything i prayed every prayer i attended this i even fasted god is unfair it's not true everybody that gives god time must get something from him if you give me time your life will never be the same give satan time your life will never be the same one of the reasons why we never see his outstretched arm is because we don't give god time i'm busy i'm too busy i am i'm busy it's demonic my soul wait thou upon the lord because my brothers and my sisters all that we are looking for one visitation from god can give you something that in a lifetime you may never get preacher say it but it is true I will search for you and I will find you and I will find you with all my heart I will lift my hands to you in worship and I will worship with all my heart we will search for you and we will find you we will find you with all our heart we will lift our hands to you in worship and we will worship with all our heart one more time let me just sing the song that i will search for you and I will find you I will find you With all my heart And I will lead my voice to you In worship I will worship With all my heart I want you to sit quietly tonight and listen to what I want to teach you sit with your soul your spirit your ears and listen God knows ask him that I love you with all my heart my philosophy of leadership is that you are a failed leader until the people you lead become exceptionally successful by every standard are we together now so it doesn't matter whether it's a revelation yet to me i must insist until it speaks in your life because you see the bible says wisdom is justified by her children by her children genesis chapter 2 genesis chapter 2 Blessed be the name of the Lord. For those of you worshiping for the first time, God bless you. We we'll honor you at the end of the service. For now, let's get to the word of God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 15. Genesis 2, verse 15. Genesis 2 verse 15 what is this that I see I command that spirit to leave now 
I command, the Lord just showed me something. I command that spirit. You just allow me to do my madness. I command that spirit. You must let this family go now. I command that spirit. You must let this family go now. The Bible says, now the Lord is that spirit. He says, and where the spirit of the Lord is. The same, I'm seeing two people to overflow one. I command that spirit to go now. You are leading right now. This chain that has held this family is time for them to testify. I command that spirit to lead in the name of Jesus Christ. I command that spirit to lead. There is still one more person. The Lord is not allowing me to continue. In the name of Jesus, I command that spirit to lead. You have to go. This is Mount Zion. You know, one of the things that happens, let me teach you something. Do you know when God opens your eyes in the spirit, you will be able to know when, let me tell you what happens. When God opens my eyes now in the spirit, I will not only see an individual sitting, I will also see the spirits connected to them. You see? Yes. And usually, because the eye is the light of the body, once there is that contact, there is an agitation in the realm of the spirit. And that's why sometimes someone can just be looking quietly and start shouting. The individual doesn't know what just transacted in the realm of the spirit. Remember the demons looked at Jesus and they saw the body of a 33 year old young man but when they look they say ah no are you not and jesus said keep quiet so you can see beyond just an individual sitting that's what just happened now you'll be surprised now these people will come and testify and tell you for 10 years nobody has risen in our family and that's it genesis chapter 2 and verse 15 Please follow me carefully. Let's see how God will grant us grace to make progress. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress and to keep it. 16. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, listen, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge, the tree of the knowledge, not a knowledge, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil shall thou not eat. For in the day that you eatest thereof, you will die. Now listen carefully. Jesus is giving a disclaimer here. He's giving man access to the garden. Are we together now? And he's giving man a disclaimer that in this garden there are many trees. I give you access to partake. The word eat there doesn't just mean eat alone. It means to partake of the benefits that come with that privilege. He says that there is a kind of tree that he forbids. It's amazing that even the tree that is forbidden has good now listen carefully the tree has what yet is part of the forbidden tree so he says this tree doesn't have evil alone there are many good things that can come from this tree yet there is a reason why i forbid you from partaking and this is the reason that the day you eat that tree, regardless of the good it carries, that day you will die. Look up. The day man ate of this, did he die? In as much as we know death. Adam did not die. Eve did not die. That means he was talking about something else. In the day, not in the month, Remember, until this time, he had created time and seasons. So he says, in the day, the moment you partake this, death starts for you. Listen carefully. And then, in spite of the fact that it comes with good, notice the marketing system of the tree. It projects good first. 
than evil not evil and good the character of this tree is such that when you come you will never know there is evil on it the system is good and evil even god acknowledges that the tree had good are we together now genesis chapter 3 We'll read from verse 1, let's see to verse 7, very quickly. And then we'll have a very serious discussion tonight and pray. The Lord is giving us wisdom. Verse 1, now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, listen, Satan is talking now. Yea, had God said, ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Verse 3. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, because the woman was not there when God was telling the man, This tree has good and evil. Adam just told her that this is a tree in the midst of the garden. And so she's replying, Satan, now. God had said, Ye shall not eat, neither shall ye touch, lest ye die. For and the serpent said to the woman ye shall not surely die for god doth know so we're talking of knowledge here remember now the tree of the knowledge the tree of the knowledge there is knowledge in the tree the central thing there is knowledge not fruit knowledge the tree of the knowledge are we together now if you have the tree of the knowledge of banana that tree will not when you eat banana from that tree it teaches you something the tree is a lecturer the fruit in the tree can teach men certain things are you getting what i'm saying now and now he's saying that god knows that in the day remember all of this will happen in a day both the dead and this that you eat thereof the first thing is that your eyes shall be opened that means a kind of illumination will come to you and then ye shall be as what as gods knowing good and evil wow that means one characteristic feature between gods is that they have a supply of knowledge and the power to use that knowledge to produce good to produce evil are we together now that whoever can manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of good and manipulate knowledge and bring an outcome of evil is no longer a man he didn't say he's the god of heaven but he said this one is not man are you getting the discussion now knowing good and evil verse 6 and when the woman saw that the tree was what now notice she didn't see anything evil again the tree is walking now this is how the tree works what did the woman see good for food and it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree desired to make one wise what kind of wisdom we don't know but we know that there is wisdom in the tree she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave unto her husband with her and he did eat you see that adam was there with her next verse and truly like satan said the eyes of them both were what open so he didn't entirely lie he said this tree can open your eyes but he didn't say what that open eye will do and so their eyes were open and they knew that they were naked and they sewed fig leaves and all of that and all of that now when you read all the drama that happened when god came down and said man what is happening he said this woman blah 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 just let's go to verse 11 i'll read just verse 11 and then i'll begin to teach and he said who told you that you were naked then he said has thou 
because this knowledge you should not have gotten it there is no way as a man without an assistance your knowledge is limited although you are a man without sin this should not be given to you then he says have you eaten of the tree and he says I commanded you not to eat you read on and he said the woman you put the woman said the serpent and he was angry and began to curse them but something interesting happened he said man has become like one of us just follow me man has become like one of us I thought the Bible says he created man image and after his likeness now God is saying something is wrong man has become like one of us and for that we will not allow him in this state to eat of the tree of life again because if he takes of the tree of life you know the tree of life was designed to keep you living in whatever state you are so now that this guy's the whole plan has been corrupted if we allow him to eat of the tree of life then redemption will no longer be possible so let's drive him out so that it can be possible to redeem this man are we together now please sit down right from genesis we see that there is a fight for knowledge the bible tells us that the first tree listen carefully the first tree was not called the tree of the knowledge of life it was called the tree of life but the second tree works by giving men information that it supplies you an information that gives your life good but with it eventually it destroys you are we together now jesus there is a tree of the knowledge of good and evil that is interwoven in this system this cosmos that we live in please listen very carefully many people like Eve have not received the miracle of understanding to discern that the trees that they continue to partake of are poisonous trees that are ministering death to their destinies and death to their lives and so my exhortation really tonight is a wake-up call to open your eyes to something very deep about the destruction that is happening to many people that they do not know they continue to die daily not as paul said by their continual connection with this tree and that you will never be able to do much for the kingdom until you understand this in the name of Jesus Christ I look at lives today as a man of God I look at people's destinies and I see certain results in their lives that I wonder how those kinds of results would have been produced are you getting what I'm saying now yes I know that these results are a product of a philosophy a product of an ideology that has been sold by a system that has been sold by a sociological context that does not honor God nor have regard for the ways of God are we together now remember the tree of life based the tree of the knowledge of good and evil the Bible tells us it is very tempting when the woman saw it there was an attraction are we together now many people's lives today have become a mess and has become complicated I am almost afraid when I look at our society today and look at the level of confusion the level of aimlessness that surrounds the lives of people people are almost clueless about everything in life the young and the old alike the rich and the poor alike and we do not know the source of this confusion I want to show you tonight if I can successfully show you and we pray my assignment tonight has been fulfilled are we together 
Colossians chapter 2. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We'll read verse 8. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Read with me, please. Look up. One to read. Beware lest any man spoil you through what? Philosophy. Uh huh. And vain deceit after the traditions of men. Here's my key point. And after the methodology the modus operandi the system of this world the greek word here is aeon an age and a mindset that is brought with that age that do not let the word spoiled here is plunder take advantage of do not let any man take advantage of you through philosophy through vain deceit through the traditions of men after the methodology there is a system that this world operates listen carefully there is a way and manner that has been sold humanity as a race have been scammed by a system a system that has advocated a way of life and a template of living and the bible says that compared to god's standard that template is wrong now but it's very difficult because the character of that tree is that it has good and we live in a society where we are governed by results which is an advantage for satan because then he can project the good that comes with that system and with it he can buy the loyalty of people by the time you can prove to me that a method is working regardless of the side effects are we together now we have products right now that are 60 percent um 60 percent potent in their result and we believe that those products are enough and we sell them so we live in a world where once there is an evidence that something works we package it and we go mainstream and we market it to people but we do not know that that good the bible says that on the, is a strategy that Satan projects the good in every evil thing. No evil thing comes as evil. Even Satan comes as an angel of light. Are you getting me now? So the character of evil is such that it projects the good first. So that you are baited by that good. Like you dangle a worm attempting to catch a fish. And the fish comes hoping to eat the worm not knowing that there is a hook behind are we together now and then that fish is caught up by the hook that don't let any man spoil you there is a philosophy in this world there is a philosophy in this age that when men subscribe to the bible says the side effect is that it is as though an armed bandit came to your house and plundered you The confusion that is in people's lives today on almost every subject matter is a call for concern that we must get back to understanding the disaster that is encapsulated in the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, society may not agree. Government may not agree because there are statistics to show that the tree has good. Are we together now? So when you tell somebody, come my dear, when you tell someone, um, give your life to Jesus and throw away some of the herbal things that were used in your village, this lady will prove to you how that herbal medicine healed five people. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Everybody say good. Shout it again, say good. And the lady will tell you she's on five points now because they said any time is time for exam rob that thing before you go to the exam hall and my goodness did it work so now that lady will not listen to your proposition to say i should throw it is it just because it has a little side effect the benefits outweigh the side effects she will say the same way you say salt one pinch of salt cannot affect a whole you know bowl of soup you don't put the same size of vegetables as you do the salt yet sometimes just for putting a little more 
you can completely ruin that soup that's how evil is evil does not have to be the same size with good it just has to be present sufficient enough to create an effect are you getting me now you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt are you getting what i'm saying you are not the only one who is salt evil too is salt that's why the bible says a little living a little not much a little please follow me very carefully this lady now can serve god but she will hold on to her charms because if the charms were 100 percent failed she would throw it obviously the devil knows nobody ever walking with the devil has 100 percent evil no he doesn't walk that way he's smart enough to know ask an ambrobber why he's still stealing he will tell you the last stealing my god we had 11 million and that 11 million changed our life i even gave tight it looks good ask him now to stop stealing the memory of the 11 million will make sure he goes back to steal are you getting what i'm saying now evil blatantly will usually drive you away but the good component in it is what will give you the staying power to remain so the bible says do not eat of that tree of good and evil there are philosophies my brothers and my sisters listen carefully there are mindsets there are belief systems that we have adopted that come with this age the bible tells us they are traceable to a tree they are traceable to a root that markets good to men and at the end destroys them thank you my dear the bible tells us again that this system that we live in has something called the wisdom of this age the wisdom of this age first corinthians chapter 2 i'm just trying to gather my scriptures before i begin to build you will be so blessed first corinthians chapter 2 paul is teaching the church in corinth and here's what he says first corinthians chapter 2 verse 6 how be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect and so you are not confused paul now begins to distinguish what that wisdom is that kind he says yet not the wisdom of that means this world has its own kind of wisdom wisdom by its character produces results it doesn't matter what kind of wisdom are we together now but the bible is saying there is wisdom that is not the wisdom of god it is the wisdom of this world there is even the wisdom that is the wisdom of the princes of this world hmm. but the bible says all of them come to naught what does that mean that means the end of them is death is destruction the wisdom of this world the wisdom of the princes of this world that we pride ourselves in that we build the entire philosophy of our lives the bible says that wisdom whoever walks with that dimension of knowledge doom and destruction is inevitable look at me please most of the issues in our world today are only symptoms of a bigger problem are we together most of the issues in our world today the issues that we face that we we believe are the issues that are depriving man and mankind from his dignity most of them are only symptoms of a bigger issue the same way someone can have headache and a doctor can say no this is not headache it is malaria the headache is a symptom of something meaning if you take panadol it may give you a temporary relief but you are not going to be healed from that malaria until you are properly treated we spend our time 
addressing symptoms we write books about symptoms listen carefully we hold conferences on symptoms and very few people are willing to go to the root and deal with the foundation that brings about this this tragic problem of mankind the ideas of this world have made our lives complicated the life of the average person living in today's world is as complicated as a gadget this wisdom we have adopted like a virus they have created a web of complication they have robbed us of the simplicity of life destroyed everything about us family life has been broken down to nonsense the dignity of responsibility has been broken down to nonsense meritocracy godliness all of these virtues that build up society and advance men they had been attacked for many years and now we are seeing the effect we have enjoyed the good of that tree for a long time and right now people are beginning to see the evil you are trying to run away but the tree said you received all of me you received the advancement that i gave you you received the technology that i gave you are we together now you received all of the enlightenment that i gave you now the other side of the equation is opening up and the war the crime the decadence and people are saying what kind of world are we in not knowing that is a food we ate and now we are paying for everything and let me tell you my brothers and my sisters that trees continue to dangle every day if we keep eating of that tree it will not only kill us it will kill our children and our children's children we have been so sucked into this system we do not even know we are in deception you can be so deceived and misled that you are not even aware that is deception underdevelopment security issues marital issues financial issues joblessness all of these things are symptoms of subscribing to a philosophy and a way of life that is antichrist and not built on life that tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it was just a diplomatic way to say the tree of life and a tree of death because the end of it is death there is a way that cement right to a man he says but the end thereof are the ways of death as i counsel people i am coming to the conclusion that if we do not re-examine our philosophies there is no hope this issue is bigger than counseling this issue is bigger than laying on of hands this issue is bigger than a church service or a conference this is a deception that is institutional and it will take people who understand the holy spirit listen carefully people who understand the ways of god to summon the courage to say no something is wrong my grandfather followed this way my father followed this way now a system is forcing me to follow that way and you turn and say no way and receive the courage to fight to victory the contentions that will come by your refusal to eat of that tree write this down the world system that advocates this tree of good and evil thrives on three major things the world system that means the antichrist system of operation unfortunately that our society is built upon thrives on three things number one on godliness on godliness today's world our civilization today is against godliness let me explain to you what that means that means to do well in today's world 
it is mandatory you must act like there's no God are you getting what I'm just saying now if you want to do well in today's world you have to indoctrinate yourself and culture yourself into acting as though God does not exist and the world today will applaud you that means that this Babylonian system this tree of the knowledge of good and evil is strangling away God consciousness from all of us and from the fabric of society the world system thrives on godlessness that means that the more you are aligned to this world it will make you in a way and manner that you do not see value for God again by destroying every Christian monument in schools for instance that can help men be aware are we together now all those things are strategies to make sure that our children the same way this little boy now does not know what a typewriter looks like that is the same way one day people will not know anything about God you will say in the beginning was the word they said is that a novel they say what do you mean is that a novel that's King James they say well I'm not aware of what you are saying that is the goal of this system that a day will come when when you say Bible study it's like you are telling a child lemonade and he says what is that what is bible sir i don't know what bible is and you say it's a book that contains the words of god he said who is god we will get there if a church does if the church does not rise and listen to what i'm telling you today you have a program on tv you mention jesus or mention god they edit it but they can leave explicit words in movies even for children don't mind that rating thing they write that means something is wrong and the church is watching and we do not understand that we are being forced to eat from the tree that contains good and evil ungodliness right now this is not this is not a generation of ignorance again satan has stopped using ignorance as a strategy this generation is too enlightened to entertain ignorance so he has started marketing this good and evil it's difficult to keep someone ignorant now because this is an inquisitive generation they want to know and so satan says instead of hiding the knowledge let's not hide it again let us corrupt it and market it so knowledge is available and affordable but largely let me tell you my brothers and my sisters over 70 percent of the information that mold and make the mind of people is a babylonian information that contains good and evil are we together you hear what they teach your children in school on one side you are happy that the children are learning biology but on the other side you know you are in trouble because good and evil are you get what i'm saying now yes ungodliness we have to preserve god consciousness and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil will never never preserve god consciousness when i was growing up 90 percent of our discussions were around school and God that was it right now the average young child the average teenager will talk about applications apps almost a thousand times before anything spiritual will be mentioned not God most young people are now spiritual and are now sociological not spiritual they are doing everything that's why they are promoting all the human activities that neutralize God consciousness like sports like music these are platforms that um, that is is, is, is is very very is very very civil and so it doesn't allow the things of God are you getting what I'm saying now it's a strategy and God is waking us up on godliness number two these three of the knowledge of good and evil that makes up the world system 
operates by distorting spiritual patterns write it down this system operates by distorting spiritual patterns is one of the most dangerous effects of this wisdom of the world it distorts spiritual patterns I want you to listen carefully Isaiah chapter 5 we'll read from verse 20 to 24 Isaiah 5 20 read with me we are reading from 20 to 24 one to read woe to them that call evil good talk to me and good evil that put darkness for light uh-huh and light for darkness that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter what kind of a generation is this that replaces everything is an overhaul nothing was spared if it is good this society calls it evil if it is light they call it darkness if it is sweet they call it bitter verse 22 21 woe to them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight uh-huh woe to them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink 23 we justify the wicked for reward and take away the righteousness of the righteous from him do you know what this means that means they force you through their life and they compel you to bend until you are out of god's pattern he said they take away the righteousness of the righteous from him so you send your child to school as a responsible young boy from a christian family and a system has been built by the time that boy is three years in that school it has taken away the righteousness from the righteous four next verse therefore as fire devoured the stubble and flame consumed the chaff so shall their root be as rottenness and their blossom shall go up as dust notice that they once blossom but the bible said it will go up as dust because they have cast away the law of the lord of hosts and despised the word of the holy one of israel in god's design and in his dealings with men he always creates patterns listen carefully god's patterns are his methodology his way of achieving his will it is not enough to obey god we must understand his pattern there is a pattern for wealth and finance in the kingdom there is a pattern for marriage in the kingdom there is a pattern for ministry there is a pattern for success but now we have a system that is forcing an ideology and even upon believers that makes us to violate patterns are we together now one of our dear ladies here she may be following online i think a few a few maybe about a month ago she left for the u.s and when she got to the u.s i think it was just like a few days or a week she just called me and i know there are people from u.s following so i i, I don't mean to insult any culture but she told me that apostle there's there's something wrong she said my roommates are all lesbians and there is a problem if i'm not mistaken i hope i'm right because she said it's like they are supposed to be believers and now she has to relate with them because there is not like here just for showing any sign of um discrimination as it were they can sue you and of course if you are not not a citizen of that nation they can take you out immediately and this lady was confused completely confused and saying what is all this i come from a place in zaria where even the person who is not doing well can be a pastor somewhere else and now i'm faced with roommates that are vocally part of a system let me tell you I don't mean to insult anyone but I told you most of those things are symptoms of a problem the problem is that we have deviated from God's pattern are you getting what I'm saying now yes 
the divorce rate in marriages is something that is scary including christian marriages one out of every two marriages will not last 10 years now please don't feel bad if anything has happened to your marriage i'm teaching here are you getting what i'm saying do you know why because two of you come husband and wife people have created their own patterns call good evil and evil good it was god who defined how marriage works society has now mentored people into creating their own laws about marriage is it not arrogant for you to come and meet something and not consult the person who created it and change the laws it's like coming to my house and meet my tap running and I come back and see that you've rewired the tap to the back of the house by what authority did you do this in my house so we have done it in ways that we cannot imagine in my my laptop I have the photo of a woman who married sardine big sardine not the small one you use yes sir yes sir are we together side by side you see them there i have it in my laptop now let me tell you this believers we are civilized people i'm not i'm not those kind of people that will teach you to not, not no 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 but i'm saying something is wrong we have to admit that something is wrong are we together now these people have their ideas they have money they have everything yet the marriage does not work and they are wondering because everybody the babylonian system has indoctrinated this lady you are not under any man you are a lady you are you know you are a wonderful person don't let any man look down on you society is these men are looking down on women this and that and the lady says yes if it's because of your money i will get my own job i will buy my own car i can be lord of myself if you drive me i can go and get my three bedroom flat we think it's a nice thing because if a lady proposes this in the world they clap for you they stand up and wave their hands and god sits on his throne and say this is not what i designed what are you designing like this already as i'm saying it you see how surprised me? how many of you have been sucked into it as i'm saying it now it's paining you which is a sign that god is delivering you because already you can see how the thing has sucked us and then the men we have our own we are even the ones that are more sucked into this thing because we need money we need to provide and we have deviated from god's pattern completely right now respect in marriage is based on who is richer not what god said i'm working i'm earning thirty thousand. you are earning ten thousand. you are not worth my respect and society say yes one one life coach somewhere who is not born again has never read the bible is now writing books and pushing it to the church because they know we buy everything are we together yes something is wrong a distortion of patterns let me tell you why patterns are important because patterns forerun the glory when patterns are violated the glory will never be seen never be seen there are ways today my brothers and my sisters i don't say this in any sarcastic way but there are ways go for pastors conferences and see how they teach men to raise money to run churches you will be amazed and you will be surprised because there is a pattern a babylonian system is marketing a strategy remember that the ark of god was supposed to be carried by a formula a man decided to invent a system to say let's let's make it easier for men and that man died what did he do that was wrong he only changed patterns it was violation of pattern that made a man lose his throne saul in the bible it was not in his office to offer sacrifices but because samuel was wasting time and the people started putting pressure on saul saul said what nonsense is this priesthood thing get me everything let me offer sacrifices as soon as he offered sacrifices samuel came and said what have you done he said you have done foolishly you would have allowed me to come and do this and god would have established your throne forever but now that you have done this your throne is taken away from you 
and Samuel tried to weep and cry and God who is full of mercy said how long will you weep seeing that I've rejected Saul as king in other words this guy is out of my program God your God every time the reason why we never see the glory of God in our churches we never see the glory of God in our families could it be that we are there eating of the tree of the knowledge of the of good and evil and is indoctrinating us to act and believe in ways that are violating God's pattern Gideon began to cry and told the angel he said why do we not see the miracles that our fathers told us and he began to tell Gideon there are idols there are things to be destroyed when it was time for Elijah to command fire from heaven he didn't just say fire come he said set me 12 altars there is a pattern set me 12 altars put water on it put this and fire came Cain and Abel offered sacrifices one was accepted one was rejected God is not only the God of the heavens he's a God of patterns God looks at how you did it not just that you did it hmm. patterns thank you Martin. Exodus chapter 25 We'll read verse 9 and then we'll read verse 20. Very quickly, please. God is taking us somewhere tonight. According to all that I showed thee, listen, after the pattern of the tabernacle, this was the building of the tabernacle in the wilderness, and God was instructing Moses that according to all that I showed you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, so shall thou make it in other words it was not Moses's idea a blueprint was given his assignment was to replicate it there are many things see in your dealing with God you will not need too much of creativity you will need obedience it is when you are executing his will on earth that you will need in your dealing with God there are few things that will be your idea I know we don't like this how you know you are working with God is that a major part of your dealing is yes sir yes sir when it becomes in my opinion that's not God you are working with hmm. creativity is not for the secret place creativity is a system of dominion you don't bring creativity when you are in the secret place it is obedience it is your heart opening to say Lord not my will but your will be done Exodus 25 25 verse 40 and look that thou make them after what their pattern which was shown you not which you guessed not which you guessed a pattern was shown you make sure that you make it after their pattern very quickly give us chapter 40 and verse 16 40 and verse 16 i'm showing you that god is a god of patterns 40 and verse 16 read with me please one to read thus did moses uh-huh according to all that the lord commanded him go to verse 33 we are reading now verse 33 to 35 it says and he read up the court he's about to finish now listen carefully round about the tabernacle and the altar and set up the hanging of the court gate read the last sentence everyone one to go so moses finished the work he finished everything according to pattern next verse and then a cloud covered the tent of the congregation God supervised until he followed the patterns to the dot. When Moses finished the work, he said, God, I finished. God said, I'm ready to come. The cloud covered the tent of the congregation and the glory of God filled the tabernacle. Next verse. And Moses was not able to enter into the tent of the congregation. Why? Because the cloud abode thereon and the glory of God filled. If the glory of God is not upon your church, could there be an explanation that something in the building or the system of that church is this? 
aligned with divine patterns because if it is built according to pattern the glory of God is like a stamp you obeyed to the latter if I look at your family and I do not see the glory of God there is a pattern that you are not following are we together now I can look at your family and I see chaos here and there husband beating wife wife beating husband I must kill you I tell you someone is violating patterns if both people walk with divine patterns there will be glory that means the glory of God is also a confirmation that his patterns have been duly followed every time you finish that which you do it's important to look around and find out where is the glory of God in it as proof that this was done according to pattern could it be that the joblessness that is plaguing young people in Nigeria could it be the reason why many of us are languishing in certain intense levels of hardship we may be well-meaning but could it be that we are violating divine patterns everybody say patterns say it again say patterns so the tree of the knowledge of good and evil causes you to be distorted from God's pattern there is a way God designed that marriage happens if you have to go on Facebook and WhatsApp to start doing this you may get a beast who is first a man before he becomes a beast which is consistent with the way that tree works is first good before evil so you meet somebody on Facebook and he says I'll go and see your parents you are the lily of the valley are we together now and that person later becomes the beast of your destiny why because patterns God designed marriage come please to be one man and one woman don't feel bad by the time this guy says one woman is not enough and brings another woman everybody say patterns patterns start fighting from the realm of the spirit because the way God designed this thing is such that one woman the woman has to be alone for you to see the best of her in marriage by the time it is now two or ten or five something must go wrong it doesn't matter what they sign patterns have been distorted are we together when a man of 50 years old is writing Waek, everybody say patterns have been distorted. Now, listen, I'm not, I'm not being sarcastic. I'm saying that it is usual for that man to not concentrate. He is not supposed to be that alert and focused just like that. Because that longevity of time has accommodated too many things that are more serious than the subject matter so it is good that a young man bear his yoke in his youth lamentation chapter 3 that god says young men walk your walks while it is day night will come when you cannot walk it's a pattern starting early in life is a pattern that's why when the spirit of delay comes upon a family it makes sure that the first person is in is writing ssc at 25 it's not about delay satan is doing everything to make you go out of pattern it is why god in his mercy introduced a mystery called restoration are you seeing that now restoration is doing something to your life to bring you back in pattern when a woman has been barren and she's 60 years old with no child the devil knows that according to the normal course of life there will be a problem giving birth or at least giving birth to a very healthy child are you seeing that now satan knows that god is a god of patterns and so he 
supplies us knowledge that makes us to be and act in ways that continue to be defiant to God's pattern because his advantage in our life is that when we are out of pattern he doesn't need to pray against us the glory was designed to locate patterns and confirm it is God speaking to us I'd like you to look at your family as you are sitting down and suddenly realize that could this be why we never saw the hand of God in our family we were Christians oh my father my mother loved God served God with all his and her heart Lord why is this family this way why are we not seeing your glory I'm showing you we are eating of a tree and the more we keep eating of that tree every time the glory comes to your house it cannot rest and the glory continues to search for a resting place and sometimes it will wait for one full generation until you arrive that's why some of you are standing up to say lord that glory must rest that glory has been hovering around my family since 1951 and nobody has aligned enough to allow that glory come lord see he said lord and now arise oh lord he said come to your resting place until then god said i don't have a place to rest and solomon said no way we have to make for you make for you a place i can tell you i understand a bit about the glory of god i know why many people do not experience the glory there are spiritual patterns Babylon. you eat of that tree notice what happened to adam as soon as they ate of the tree what happened the glory lifted it was the glory that covered them they didn't even know whether they were naked or not they didn't need clothes because the shekinah of god covered them as soon as they ate of that tree imagine that every day you are eating of that tree think of what is happening to your life and think of what you are programming for your children's children already so every time our fathers kept bowing in that shrine they thought they were just paying homage but something Ichabod, the glory continued to move back and back and back and back and back by the time you came to the scene, there was no glory again. Eleven ladies, beautiful ladies, no man to marry them. Thirteen ladies, no child. Let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters, it's not just about prayer. When we return to the pattern, it's with a rush. The glory will come. When Moses finished, not when he started, God kept watching. Finish it and let my glory come. You know, from my paternal side i never saw any blessed person i think the most blessed person was my dad and it's not like he was any blessed i said what kind of course is this how can you be so hard working and love god my father was a very honest man loved god but i, I said no no someone has to be angry oh this night and say no my family has been eating from a tree Eating from the tree can mean bowing to an idol. Eating from the tree can be an indoctrination that your salary is where your wealth is. You think it's a nice statement, but it's something that has been sold to you. So when you hear things like all blessings come from God, they only pass through men. It's an ideology that fights everything you've been taught about job. Oh, the boss said, I can waste your life now. And you say, sir, it's true. Ah, and the psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills. I'm not confused. I know where my help comes from. Who is an arrogant man born of a woman that sits on a chair and says he will frustrate you? When there is God. An average man of God has been taught now that there are things that if they are not in your church members will not come please don't get me wrong i know if there's any man of god falling I'm, I'm an excellent person but right now we are doing a lot of nonsense that will not help us see the glory of god nonsense members can drink tea they can eat rice they can eat yam and go because there is a pattern and i if i be lifted that's the pattern i will 
Paul may plant, Apollos may water, but it's not given to men to bring increase. Increase is a mystery that only the Lord of the harvest knows the formula. You say something now, people insult you and say you are arrogant, but the result is not showing. I want you tonight to start thinking the convictions that I hold, where did it come from? Where did it come from? There are many well-behaved ladies in this place. You started very well with God until you read a book. Until you joined some group of friends who told you, blast gentlemen. Don't talk anybody that talks. Just give it to them. Don't be doing like a mumu girl. Men are not like that. I say, eh, that's how it works. You ate something and from that day your glory went away and the kind of men who would ordinarily come you find out that men increase but it's all nonsense kind of men men that you cannot carry to your parents something a pattern has gone wrong the one factor that was the reason why the glory of God was on you the devil now came and lied to you why be respect yourself be a well-behaved girl be all of, let me tell you if you act like you're a mumu naive girl men will not come and you say okay i must reinvent myself to be a happening lady and that was the day your destiny helper went away there are many pastors some of you here have come here for impartation let me tell you i submit to you i am a student of patterns there are things that i know i found them God taught me. I said, Lord, I will never bend to them. Years ago, I remember saying some things and I was insulted. I was criticized because of it. I said things about the glory of God. I said things about increase. And I said, the way we are going, if people do not understand these things, they will pay for it. People laughed at me. And today is unfortunate for many people. people see some of the results that God is producing it's not a charm it's patterns when a pattern is complete listen to me my sister you may come from a family where nobody knows you stay with God's pattern let his glory rest on you you will join people to wonder and say God what what am I doing and God says I'm the God of patterns man of God follow God's pattern for ministry and you will be afraid of what God will do through your life. We like cutting corners. Cutting corners. Cutting corners. I want a ministry, but I want it now. I want power, but I want it fast. I want this, but I want it now. And we find out that somewhere along the line, the patterns are distorted. And we never see the power of God. Are we together? You do what I'm telling you now to do and see how society will laugh at you. Because we have trained people that the more godless we are, the more happening they are. You see that? So this gentleman now is in the house and somebody advises him, don't give your wife money because if you give her money, she will not respect you. That's what is in vogue now. A demonic pattern. Because loyalty and submission was supposed to be by revelation, not manipulation. Now the man is manipulating the woman. And one day her owner of Hitofel too will advise her. And as soon as he advises her, she will get a job and start a business and arrest the husband to prove to him that I am the man in the house. My brothers and my sisters, we're in trouble if we don't return to pattern. Yes. Many marriages do not work because the men are not under authority. You've heard me say it. I have read a lot of books about marriage and I respect it. But I submit to you that many of the books are dealing with symptoms. Do you know, just for a man not having the fear of God, there are hundred problems that can arise from that relationship. Now, you can write a book to solve those various hundred problems, but the root cause is that this man is not saved, period. When a man is not saved, the tendencies that can come are infinite. 
when a man is not under authority he can beat the living daylight out of this woman and say who cares i'm the lord of my life i don't listen to no man the arrogance of nebuchadnezzar it's a pattern why do doctors specialize why do they look at certain sicknesses and they can show you immediately because the sicknesses have patterns malaria has a pattern typhoid has a pattern a doctor can do this just do a quick examination and say wow quickly you need to see a consultant something is wrong without the patterns they have been taught to identify patterns that's it there is a pattern that gives you wealth in this kingdom many believers will not listen the world has its own system it will work but wait to see what it will give you later on it will give you high blood pressure you will be a liar you will be a thief you will destroy your life destroy the integrity of your family so two of us come show two of us can stand right now and i have I have some money here. I have 1,000 Naira. Watch this. He got his one. Hold your own. Hold it high. He's hold, he got his 1,000 by a Babylonian system. And I got my 1,000 from a kingdom system. You would think that two of us are holding 1,000. No. He's holding 1,000 minus five years gone in his life. That's why the blessing of the Lord make it rich and added. That means there is a kind of blessing that adds too. If the blessing of the Lord adds not, that means there is a type that you can get, but with it you will get this. That's what happened to many of our parents. By the time they are 55 years, he found out that because of Horsley and the way he pushed like that, he's about to retire, but he's not hearing again. Come on to me, Jesus. Let's listen to him now. Let's listen to Jesus. Come on to me, all you that are weary and heavy laden. He promises that he will give you rest. This is what many people can kill for. Look at this. This thing you see. Many people have left God because of it. Many people are going to hell fire because of it. Yet they never find it. And God tells you, look, there is a way I can give you this such that you will serve me. And the world says, the way I give you this is, the, the more you denounce Jesus, the more I give it to you. So you keep saying, Jesus, I don't love you. And Mammon says, that's how it works. By the time you have plenty of this, you have not only left the cross, you have left everything God. So when you come and say, I can have this and yet have Jesus, Babylon says you are joking. But this is what God is training you into doing. That you can have this and if God says, let it go, you drop it. Because you are aware that this is not your true value. Your true value is Christ. We must return tonight to patterns otherwise we are going to suffer remember that every result is governed by something that something is a pattern the result you get is brought by the glory of God I've seen a little bit of the glory of God and I know when a man has found a pattern for the glory give up on that man if you want to try to take the glory in that area you are wasting your time for as long as the pattern is kept the glory will always always without fail tomorrow i'm in lagos preaching at a conference and i know that their lives will never be the same because there is a pattern it's not because i'm joshua selman ah elijah said bring me 12 stones i know how to make fire come from heaven Man of God, you are not a blessing to your members if you do not understand the pattern that brings the hand of God. There is a pattern that men do on earth that brings favor. There is a pattern that brings speed. There is a pattern that brings the anointing. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. 
I was glad. There is something in the house of the Lord that changes the lives of people. But today we are eating trees that make the things of God. Do you know the tree of the knowledge of good and evil teaches you that it is in the abundance of hustling you prosper. Have you had those teachings? And have you seen people write books on them? Have you not read in your Bible that except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it? The world will laugh at you for saying that. Have you not read again that the Lord said, except he watches over a city, he says, that the watchmen watch it in vain. He said it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night. Does that look like somebody's life that you know? wake up in the morning sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow he said but he gives his beloved sleep and you see when you struggle and it does not work you will be angry at those who are getting it easy because patterns are supposed to create spiritual ease so you can step into a place and gyrate like a herbalist. The power of God will fall. He is going to fall. And you keep looking at the ladies and nobody is shouting and you are angry. What is no, no sister shouting? And yet, someone comes with the ark and knows how to put 12 stones together. And all of a sudden, you are hosting a dimension of glory. And you stand and watch and say, how are these people doing it? He has to be the devil. No, sir. Pattern. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God, and I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are. don't do what everybody is doing just listen to me and follow me I was stupid enough to follow Lord where do I go this way Lord where do I go I remember when the Lord told me put koinonia messages the audio put it on your Facebook page and let it go Lord what is that many ministries raise their money to run the church primarily through the media arm the media arm of every ministry is one of the major ways that God blesses them with Lord if you are doing that how then are you going to bless the ministry but Lord how do you put a message on Facebook and then you said you will give it wings the patterns of God he uses the foolish things my brothers and my sisters listen to me a lady was talking to me that she was somewhere, one of our ladies, she used to be in the worship team, that she was somewhere on Kekena Pep and the person on Kekena Pep was playing my message. This was in, I think it was in Wari or so or Bielsa. Now, that one is no more advertisement. There is a finger. When you see results that are produced by patterns, you will know that this one is God. The pride of our generation will never allow us to humble ourselves and say, Lord, I don't know. I don't know. Many young people do not know how to succeed and they will never go to God. They will consult with all kinds of equally proud people like them and come up with all kinds of formula that is not consistent with the ways of God. That formula may have worked in 1970, but I guarantee it will not work in today's world. 
listen young people in nigeria we need to receive the formula for our advancement because computers have re have replaced men a day will come when almost everything will be done by computers i don't know what the employment issue will be but there is there is a system in this kingdom when there was famine only two sets of people were spared the king and the prophet the king and the prophet did not go through famine any other person in between suffered the squalor of it Alabara, you are the mighty God, and you are so beautiful. You are the glorious Alabara. Are people who will tell you about our teachings that they can stand and sit strangers i shared with you the testimony of a gentleman that bought flash new flash in the case flash drive bought a new flash drive in the case like that given to him the gentleman opened it went to slot it in his laptop and there was koinonia messages brand new flash because it's not men that market this thing they are spirits Ask Jacob in the house of Laban. Do you not see that there was a pattern that made Laban left for three days? How many days? Three days. He came back after three days and saw that his cattle had changed in three days. Do animals get pregnant in three days? But a spiritual pattern was downloaded to the earth realm and things change. That means there is something we can receive from heaven. Remember our popular scripture in this ministry. Knowest thou the ordinances of heaven and canst thou establish the dominion thereof in the earth. There is a pattern. My brothers and my sisters, listen to me. I want you to be careful what everybody calls the way. Did you hear what I said? Don't be afraid of being controversial. Be careful what everybody says is the way. This is how people make it in life. This is how people marry these days. No, sir. Many of our young children are being destroyed right now in churches because in a bid to create a Western or a 21st century context, we are robbing these young children of the quality of knowing God. Look at Islam. They have not changed their pattern. The way they train children regardless whether it's in saudi arabia or whatever the pattern is the same they know the potency of that formula is god speaking to us let me give us one more and then we'll pray is god speaking to someone tonight so if i have not seen the glory of god in my life the explanation tonight is that there could be that i am eating I am partaking of an information that may be mainstream it may be popular when i talk to this my adorable gentlemen they are absolutely great people they are going very far you see that yes they are going very far but you see there is a pattern that people believe if you follow you will rise fast believe me it is nonsense any pattern that is not consistent with god's word will not take you far it will throw you up and crash you down that's why you see people rise and shine for two years and then they say their time has come and gone but is that what your bible says doesn't it say that the path of the just talk to me is as a shining light so what is this up today and down tomorrow because there is a pattern if you have to put money in my pocket and bribe my way to making the world know you your success is at the mercy of my loving you the day i don't love you you are in trouble but when god is the one who leads you you will be surprised when you hold my hands everything becomes possible when
So it's possible to go there and have a child, but something will come. With that child will come the trouble in your family. And then the woman stays and uses her faith. And the day God is ready to visit her, God will not give her a child. The woman will carry tri triplets, one child being equivalent to 10 children. You know that there are people who alone, they are equivalent to a nation. They give birth to one child. Because of that one child, somebody you have been trying to see for years comes to visit you. Five people get a job because a child was born. Is that a child? A child that does what a CEO cannot do? A destiny helper from birth. One week from birth is already a destiny helper. And as adult as we are, we couldn't help ourselves. A child helps us. That's not a child. That's a miracle. That's a breakthrough. Number three. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil thrives on self-centeredness. I want you to listen to my message, Christ-centeredness. I preached it, I think, earlier this year. The language, I. I want it my way. My way is the language of Babylon. My way is proof you are eating of that tree. Men who eat of that tree have a way they talk. It must be my way. Listen. Listen. Oh, generation of young people, let's listen. My way, my formula. We live in a generation right now where there is an obsession for having things happen our way. I want it my way and we take it a step further to force others to also do it our way that's the height of selfishness now most great relationships are destroyed because of the I factor myself I want it my way it has to be as it pleases me unfortunately when you come to the kingdom you learn that the more I goes down, the more glory rises. And I, Jesus, if I be lifted up, not you, John said that I will decrease. Not just him, that self, I, decreases and that you increase. James chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 self-centeredness is one of the biggest tragedies of eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil James chapter 3 give us 14 and 15 the Bible says something very instructive it says listen but if ye have bitter envyings and strife in your heart glory not and lie not against the truth 15 it says this wisdom so there is a wisdom that is as a result of self and greed and bitterness my selfishness and my greed can make me act in a way that looks like wisdom but the motivation are we together now the motivation for that wisdom is bitterness self-centeredness the Bible says that kind of wisdom descended not from above. Remember the knowledge of the good of good and evil. It says, but is earthly, is sensual, and is devilish. So simply because I want to be the one to shine, I can say, Sam, um, because there is a gun inside that room, 
I said, Sam, why don't you go to that room and go and help me carry a basket? But the goal is so that he will be implicated, so that he will get out of the way for me to shine alone. It looks like wisdom, but the motivation is self-centeredness. The Bible says that wisdom is devilish. Our world today, and sadly, even in ministry, is full of self-centeredness. Romans chapter 16, quickly please. Verse 17 and 18. While I was studying this, I found this scripture and it blessed me. Tonight is a very strong admonishment and I want you to listen carefully. 16 and 17. Okay. Read with me. One, two, go. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause what? Division and offense contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned and do what avoid them next verse for they are such that serve not our lord jesus but they are and by good words and fair speeches they deceive the heart of the simple your bible so i can be looking for money and I can say, do you know what? Um, the Lord gave me a prophetic instruction that all of us are going to do this and that and that. All of us are going to raise to 2,000 and come and touch my shoe and your life will change. And God knows he didn't give that instruction. I just calculated that if there are 5,000 people here and everybody gives to 2,000, highest, plus or minus, I've already done the mathematics. And then I come and say, oh, God said no. Their belly is their God. Their belly. A man's belly can be his God. Meaning you can serve your stomach. It's amazing what people do. So that they can feel satisfied. And don't care the effect on others and on the kingdom. That's why people can kill. I can look at this gentleman and plot with an assassin. Look at this, this touts around that steal phones and do all of that. They can come and cut someone's hand, cut someone's neck to collect a phone of 25,000 and go and sell it 5,000. That is self-centeredness at work. The amount it would take for that victim to treat himself or herself may even be more than what they sold that phone for. But because they need to smoke now, everybody, even if it means death, listen, the moment the comfort of people does not become a factor for your consideration in your desire, you are self-centered. I want this. It must be my way. Brothers, we want this. I'm the man of the house. It must be my way. I stamp it. Ladies, I'm the woman of the house. I'm not the one that married you. You are the one that married me. It must be my way. And the naughty children come. I'm not the one that gave her to this death to they say their own. Selfishness. Are we to... <laughs> Who Jesus himself stripped himself of his glory and came to the earth for God so loved not himself for God so loved the world I have loved thee with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness selfishness Lord bless me so that everybody in my family will know that I'm not a small man my elder brother who is shouting, Lord bless me, let me disgrace somebody for you. And God says, me? What do you think I am? Your mate? God sees my heart and I stand before you. I say this. I don't know how many things I do in my life 
considering myself as the chief benefactor God is my witness there are things I do for people today that I sit down sometimes and I think and I say Kai you man now I will. I talk to myself I said now for you Joshua Selman when you do not have a heart for God and people you are eating of the tree of life of knowledge of good and evil the tree of life takes the attention from you to others are we together now as a preacher if your whole church is around you what you can get from members how they can clap for you then that means you're in trouble let me tell you true ministry is not about the preacher it's about the blessed people that God brings so that they are raised, so that they are equipped, so that their lives are blessed. I sit down here many times and I fight tears when I see people stand to testify about the marvelous things that the word of God did for them. Listen, I have found out that there are not many things that are important in life. Did you hear what I said? I have found out that if you walk with God's ways, there are not many things in your entire lifetime that are really important. The complications that come, that our lives bring, are a web that the Babylonian system created for us. So we have depression. Go to the village. You will hardly find people with high blood pressure. For some of them, it's because they are not enlightened. But for some of them, through the wisdom of the ancient, they know the things that really matter. Did you know that when all is said and done in this life, there are not many things that are important. As busy as we are, 6 o'clock in the morning, we're on our way going. 12 o'clock, we're on our way going. We do this and kill ourselves, trying to eat, trying to gain relevance. I must buy the suit of 200,000 so that they will know. And that self-inflicted pain leads you to do things that you have no business doing. The moment you buy the 200,000 naira suit, the person you want to wear it for, you hear that they've made the person a senator. And you feel stupid for laboring for one year to prove a point. Listen, I have seen people who died trying to impress others. I've seen people who died trying to create something in their life that it was not part of God's template for them. Meet a man on a deathbed right now and tell him what do you desperately want. He will not say an estate. He will not say I need an extra wife. He will not say I need a male fast. The only thing he will cry for is give me more time. That means time is the most valuable thing. And if God ever gives you time, you have everything. But we can waste time to look for what is less than time. God gave you time to serve him, time to love him, time to seek him. We were on our way going to... Um, I think it was while we we're going to movie while we we're going to the airport I was talking to my people and I told them I said guys do you know that this you people's thing that you have forced me to buy has reduced my productivity by at least 10 percent and they were amazed I said I don't have a problem with it but um, you can sit down with somebody for 20 minutes and not even ask him his name because someone else is talking to you and the person who is talking to you can even have gone to be with the Lord yet he's talking to you and somebody that is alive that can help you now you see that everybody people have had accidents typing text while driving people have done all kinds of things you see someone stand by the roadside shouting alone and just nodding with you yeah, please. These things are turning us into fools. We have to remind ourselves that we are the highest of God's creation. I'm 
not against excellence don't get me wrong but something is critically wrong that we must trust God for it's a mind control system it's controlling us right now when you stand people look at you and they look at the phone you are holding they see one kind of thing they say okay you can stay there that's a society that is depraved of the formula so it puts pressure someone who is busy saving money for something is under pressure let me carry this there are some you i i thank god because it doesn't allow me to read the prayer items of miracle service i'm sure i would have edited some before presenting them to god i said this is nonsense god please don't waste your time there's a crucial issue here someone is dying leave this iphone issue and kill the person dying So I can go to the place of prayer and spend three hours and that three hours is not because I love God and his purposes the three hours is because I'm manipulating the hand of God to meet my need oh God if you give me a good job and you give me an iPhone Lord you too you know you'll be glorified and God says how how present your cause there's no problem how will I be glorified I said, well, Lord, they will respect me. And say, have you, have you found out how many times you mentioned your name in that equation? I said, no, I'm not a careless God. I don't waste. And yet another person is doggedly involved. I said, Lord, I know. There is nothing that I have that is not yours. And while he's talking, God is telling someone, give him the latest iPhone every year. He said, God, I don't need it. He said, me, I want you to need it. That's God for you. It's amazing how God can take someone else's prayer request and give another person who really seeks him. Please, when you go to the secret place, don't waste your time. Learn how to get God's heart. Nobody comes with his heart without his hands. If you invite my heart, my hand will follow. If you invite my hand, I can keep my heart far while my hand goes. Get his heart. And you will see what his hand will do. It's the hand that will remove the heart and put it for you. But with that heart will come more than you have ever imagined. I see God do things in my life and I see God do things in this ministry that sometimes... Okay. This God, ba, I want you to believe him. I will never bow to Babylon. Is a corrupted system. I have seen the fallacy of this system. They are arrogant. Even one hour to their destruction, they will still be arrogant. They have deceived many people today. The Babylonian system has made many people to go to hell. Are you aware of that? There are people who would have been on their way to heaven, but a system deceived them. They deceive many of our parents to not love God. They embrace education, but they left God. Believing that they will be on their job forever, they forgot that demons are still on earth. While they were promoted, their inability to be connected to God didn't give them the opportunity to make exploits. And their lives are almost miserable today. Young people lie to themselves. If you take this and smoke this, you are a man. And it sells a system and you embrace it. Let me tell you, I introduce to you once again a system that is superior may be controversial for a while but the results are like day and night you will rise above men men and watch life in wonder yes it's true I've made my choice I really have I'm not going to run my life based on a depraved system that has no respect for God I will not make money at the expense of my relationship with God no sir that is devilish money and God are not the same I will never allow any brilliant financial expert make me believe money and God is the same no in the beginning God not dollars in the beginning God not Naira in the beginning God not NMPC in the beginning God not ABU in the beginning God and he says he's Omega too so whatever happens in between I'm sure that he's still there 
I live a very happy life, truly speaking, and I live a very peaceful life. Do you know why? Because I have learned in my life there are very finite things I'm doing with my entire life. The things I'm doing with my life, they are not many. These are the things I live for. These are the things my entire course on earth will be for. I don't have time to waste on nonsense. There's no time wasting to prove any point. High blood pressure. If they tell you I have high blood pressure, well, pray for me, but I don't think it's true. I sleep like a baby. I wake up happily. This is the day the Lord has made. I rejoice and I am glad in it. Wake up tomorrow morning and stand by the road and see the anger of people. He's alone. Nobody's on the road yet. He's already angry. Honing alone and angry. This wicked world. Why is life like this? And God says, come up to me. Say, no, God, stay out of my life. And others even say, it's because you came into my life. Have you heard people say that? If the devil ever puts that thought in your mind, my brothers and my sisters, cast it. That is because God came into my life. That's why I'm not lifted. If it was not this God thing, I would have quietly bribed my way. I would have been in NMPC now. And people regret and make it look like God, you are a disadvantage. Bazankoma, Bazankoma, Nina yes, Bazankoma. children based on your own convictions if you don't fear God you can't make your children fear God they will fear what you fear you fear money you will raise your children like that whatever you serve is what they will serve you say as for me and my house as for me and my house I've made a choice I want you to join me make this choice make this choice as for me money will not stand between me and God Faith will not stand between me and God. This devilish system, it doesn't mean we should run away from the world. We cannot. We are in the world. But there is another philosophy. Listen. We are praying. In the world, Sam come. If Sam offends me, the world teaches that Sam has offended you. An eye for an eye. Make sure you do something that bends him so that he will know but when you come into the kingdom it says to even pray for those who despitefully use you now you do that let me tell you what the world calls you mumu that's the name that's the name invented for those who obey god that far when you obey god that far the world created a name for you everybody will be taking you for a ride you are doing like an idiot revenge share. and bible says vengeance is mine and you are thinking do I, do I do something for Sam? David had the opportunity to kill Saul and he left Saul. <laughs> David, yes, your chance. David said, it doesn't work that way. There is a pattern. It is God that lifts. If I lift myself, I will keep myself in the palace. Give. That's the pattern of the kingdom. The wall says, take, search his pocket, remove everything and make it your own. That's how you rise. And that's the way many of us have thought. You can inflate school fees. Daddy, they've increased our school fees to 120,000. Print some letters that are a lie. And they give you and you say smartness. That's what the world calls it. In this kingdom, we call it death. Because God's system of justice will catch up with you for sure. Are we together? We are going to pray. Tonight is a wake-up call that you should stop eating from the tree. Although it looks like it has good, there is a more excellent way, the tree of life. An ideology and a proposition that is superior by far. You will live long and live happy. You will give and people will think you're a madman, yet you are happy because you understand the system. That your children surround your table. They don't run away from you like you ran away from your parents. 
they come to you and love you that you can lock your house morning till night with your family members and say today we are worshiping god in this family not no time no time i need to make ends meet i need sharp sharp i need money there's one money somewhere and god is saying settle down god no 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 my the, the person has called me to come now i need to come a man can receive nothing intelligent people hear me lean not on your own understanding he says in all your ways acknowledge him I am aware that I'm not very smart in myself I'm giving up on my own intelligence outside of God that's why I need him like a matter of life and death and I say, Lord, if you do not speak, my intelligence is too frail to give me the results that I seek. These are the kinds of people that he loves. When people stand and say, Apostle Joshua Selman, I remember that in this kingdom, there is only one person who is glorified. It is in his being glorified that you are also lifted. And then I turn, I say, Lord Jesus, this is unto you. And they say, no, shine. I say, no, we shine by letting him shine then he reflects his light on us. That's how we get our own. We don't shine and turn our backs at him. Say, Lord, I have brought you this as a trophy. And he says, you are doing this for me, then I will lift you. Men of God, be careful. When men begin to clap for you and say, without you, the world will not move. Without koinonia, you cannot rise. I mean, come. With or without me, God's sovereignty remains. With or without me, his kingdom and his purposes will continue. If I die today, you will only cry for seven days. You will first try to raise me back. If I don't refuse to wake up, you will throw me, you will pray and pray and be tired and one by one you will start going and throw me in a grave and cry one last time and I tell you that will be it. You will think your life will not continue. I will stand and I'm watching you with the angels and say, bury that body and go. <laughs> I want you to live a superior life a life that is free from fear if I fail what happens if I fail hey if I don't marry what happens if I don't have children no to deliver them who through the fear of death fear have all their lifetime subject to bondage if you want to buy a car today the reason should not be to prove a point Lord I need it for the comfort of my life for my family ultimately for your kingdom and God says pattern complied let the car come Lord I need it have my colleagues have car this small boy that was in SS1 when I was writing work and God said SS1 I was 33 years old when I saved the world I saved those who were also 70 years so if you are using age that carnality in you God will not prosper you and you will sit down there and say my colleagues and their children will come and be feeding you but if you say lord is for your glory and i've taught you how you know god is being glorified in your life whoever takes the shame is the one who has been taking the glory did you hear what i said whoever takes the shame god cannot be taking the glory while you take the shame many of us are so shame conscious we got it from our cultures shame shame Ah, let him take the glory and let him take the shame is his namesake is defending not my namesake you enter your sabbath lord is for your glory for your glory i will do anything just to see you to behold you as my for your glory, I will do anything just to see you, to behold you as my King. One more time, sing it. For your glory, I will do. Gotta 
be where you are. I want to be where you are. Got to be where you are. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, He gave His only begotten Son. Hallelujah. For God so loved the world. The world there is cosmos. The social system that has to do with people. Listen please. And has to do with the entire territory. The social system. He says for God so loved the world. And he proved that love. Listen, listen. Because love must be manifested to be appreciated. Are we together now? And the Bible says that he gave his only begotten son. And please don't be confused. There is a name. That son is called Jesus. Because there are many people who can preach to be the begotten of the father. But the only begotten son who after his resurrection now became the first begotten. Right? Until the resurrection of man, he was the only begotten. Please listen. You see, everything about this Bible was pointing to this very revelation. The revelation of Jesus Christ. Everything. The book of Revelation says the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not the revelation of a formula or a principle. So the law, the prophets, Abraham, Samson, Isaac, Judges, everything was tracing to the genealogy of Jesus Christ. And then the Bible says that he manifested himself before people and he was full of grace and truth. Listen, Jesus came with a message and his message was very simple. He said, repent. The word repent is not the word turn from your sins. No, preachers preach that as a result of lack of understanding the word repent is an indication of completely turning from a direction to another please just be patient with me this family or minister are we together now turning from one direction to the other but the first step to that turning is acknowledging a person his sacrifice and his government that's the first step and then you begin to walk in accordance to his principles only when you do that are you said to have repented many people have not repented they want to repent they think they have repented they hope they are repenting the first message that was preached after the resurrection of Christ is that men and brethren what shall we do and this is what the apostle said for the remission of your sins so the bible says he gave his only begotten son you laid aside your majesty gave up everything for me suffered at the hands of those you have created you took all my when you died and rose again now today in heaven if you know it just sing it with me i really want to worship you my lord you have won my heart and i someone to use and withdraw money he gave he donated 
and Jesus came upon the earth and he began to do many great things. Listen, Jesus did not just come. Please, I want you to pay attention. It's going to be very brief and we'll begin to pray. Jesus did not just come to show us how God looked alone. He came to show us how we should look. So when he walked upon the earth, he was the prototype of God's idea of the man he had created. He was invincible, the Bible records. Above situations, above circumstance, with unlimited power, yet a man of extreme self-control. He knew when to speak and he knew when to keep quiet. There would be so many sick people like the 10 lepers he would heal one and just walk away because his desire was not to show power his desire was to do the will of the father he was more interested in bringing satisfaction to his father than building a ministry people tried to say look build a ministry and he said no 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 no, no. i can of my own do nothing as I see my father do. So he came to show us the prototype of the true Christian life. A life that is completely yielded to the will of the father. Void of self-ambition. Void of a desire for vain glory and personal gratification outside of Christ. A life that is crucified with Christ. Are we together now? And then... The Bible begins to describe to us that which happened today many years ago. We know it as the passion of the Christ. It started from the communion where they came into him by covenant so that they would authorize him. John chapter 6 says, except you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you cannot be part of me. You cannot have my life. So while they were taking the communion, they were giving him access to carry the sin of man upon himself and then the bible says he went to gethsemane and there he cried he prayed until tears were like drops of blood afterwards he was ready to be crucified and brothers and sisters i know that we celebrate easter today is good friday pain is what made today good are we together sacrifice is what made today good if he refused to lay down his life listen when Pilate looked at him and said don't you know i have the power to free you he said, ah, 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 ah. He said no man has this power except it is given unto him by my father he said i have the power to lay it down and the power to pick it up again in other words i was not coerced my love for you made me to sacrifice my life my reputation and everything we talk a lot about Good Friday, but we never know what made it good. This is what made it good. That a man gave his son, then the son gave his life. Are we together now? It's one thing to give your child. It's another thing for the child to agree. He can refuse. Jesus had the right to refuse. In fact, he was tempted to negotiate it. He said, Father, if it be possible, you are the all wise God. There is another way you can do this thing. But then he remembered, nevertheless. I told you the hallmark of sonship is servanthood. The true proof that you are a son is that you can give up sonship to become a servant. Are we together now? The father gave Jesus. Jesus gave his life. And don't be confused. He gave his blood he gave his righteousness. Are we together now? He gave up his position. And when he was doing that, he had you in mind. Listen, listen. He never went to the cross because of anything he did of himself. The Bible says he was a man touched with the feelings of our infirmity, yet without sin. But he took your place because the Bible says we all like sheep have gone astray right he said every man has gone his own way with our ideas about god 
our ideas about success would you give our mother a chair please let her just sit down i'll minister to you in a moment please at least let her just sit down hallelujah well all of you you can sit down i'll call you now they're all looking at me um sit down especially this my friend friend how are you what's his name aaron kelvin just get somewhere they can sit around and i will attend to you now just five minutes let me establish what hallelujah so please come sir i offend a government and they are about to destroy me listen please about to destroy me and the bible testifies that i have no power in myself and then someone comes and while i'm on my way to destruction he interrupts and he says i love you too much to let you keep gambling and trying your way this is what i want you to do stand back and watch me pay the price and while he was on the way while they were flogging him in his mind he was saying mankind i hope you are watching this would have been you i hope you are watching i hope you are watching the scars as he began to bleed he said, I hope you are watching. See, if two people come and they tell you they love you, the best answer to give those two people is, I'm watching. Because love is a verb. Are we together now? I am what? Watching. All kinds of things have told you they love you, but they left you. But Jesus said, watch my love. I'm not going to make noise about it. First, stand back. And while they flogged him, he said, if it's for you, I will still go the extra mile. And they flogged him. The father gave him, he gave his health. The father gave him, he gave his prosperity. The father gave him, when we say his life, let's break it down. What, what is in his life that he gave? Because that's what he gave you. What was in the life of Jesus? The ability to reign and rise above sickness and diseases. The father gave him. He gave it away. In exchange. The Bible says he was rich. But he gave it. Are we together now? He had a reputation of dominion. But he laid it aside. I hope you know that they stripped him naked. The covering you see around is just for social reasons when you are watching movies. A 33 year old man, naked. Children watched him. Adults watched him. People mocked at him and said, you claim to be a king. And he said, this is all for you. Are we together? Blood dripping out from every part of his body. Every time he was tempted to give up. He said, no, if I give up, where I stop is where you must continue. And I know that even if it was for the last nail, you still would not be able to take it. See, listen, if you think what happened on the cross is what Jesus just died for, physically, you will be deceived because there are human beings who have been crucified. What he stopped you from was not the physical activity. It was what was happening in the spirit. You can do the physical one, I guarantee you. People have been crucified, but you don't know what that meant. In the spirit a lot was interplaying in the spirit while that was happening he became adam from gethsemane from gethsemane to the cross he was no longer the christ he was jesus adam the very man of sin mortality came upon him please listen and the father kept watching he had given him and he knew that it is more blessed to give than to receive. So there was no negotiation about receiving. The blessing was that he would bring many sons into glory. Are we together now? When they took him to that cross and they nailed him, as his blood began to drip upon the earth, and in that excruciating pain, it was a way of torturing criminals. He was not just looking at Mary and John. He was looking at you. He was looking at me. 
he was looking at every witchcraft in our family and every ordinance of darkness and he said if it's for you i will do it but he made a very interesting statement we are going to establish tonight three words that represented victory it is finished oh hallelujah i didn't study english but i know that when a man says it is finished it is finished is a reality that is present and continuous forever not it was finished you would have said the condition for it finishing has changed so we have to start another one it is finished the question is what is the it that has been finished first that inability to access the father we call it lack of righteousness he said that error is finished that 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 christianity that has to do with ceremonial cleansings having to atone for your sins by your own strength i brought it to an end that ability of saying qualify and come to God. He said it is finished. You now will come through my own invitation. My own access. Like I organize a program. And I invite someone. And while you are about to drive him. I say no, no, no. That's my guest. Come. But you are not only his guest. He also made you the one to be celebrated. Please listen. There is a dimension of this we have not learned. And this is what I want to teach us. When Jesus went to hell and met Satan, a discussion transpired. And Satan said, remember Adam. And he said, I don't remember Adam. I am him. Don't you see? This is Adam. And Satan knew it was true. Because only Adam had the right to collect the key. No other man could collect the key. And so he went as the second Adam. And said, you killed Adam. And every man that came from him, let me have the keys. Revelations 1 verse 1, when you read down what? I am he that was dead, but now I am alive and I hold the keys. He collected the keys. Listen. Access to the earth, access to dominion, access to God's life. That's the most important part. The life of God. I'm going to explain it. When he resurrected, watch this. Did you know that if he just started walking and doing all of the things he did, man would not be able to partake of it because he had not ascended to heaven. It would just be that he was victorious. And then the Bible says, according to the book of Hebrews, that he went to heaven as the high priest, the lamb, the sacrifice, as everything. And then he took his blood, poured it upon that tabernacle, and said, Father, you are just for seeing that man does not have access to divine help and all of this because you are a just god your throne is founded upon righteousness and justice the bible says they are the foundations meaning there's no negotiation that will bend it but now he says every time you think justice let mercy begin to speak watch this I really want you to get a revelation of this. It will change your life. Every time the voice of judgment, the voice of mess or of, of justice begins to speak, I will not fight it. But remember that I not only paid the price, I paid the price for everybody who will be an offender on this path. Are we together now? When that happened, a coronation happened in heaven we see that coronation the psalmist gave us a revelation and from philippians chapter 2 the bible says a name an office an identity was given to him in heaven to sit upon that throne are we together now and the bible says anything that has to do with man's redemption man's vindication must pass through him meaning a man is only condemned when he condemns that man 
a man is only justified when he justified the father put it in his office are we together watch what he did when he sat down on that throne he told man there is another dimension you do not know i know that i paid the price for you but i want to teach you another dimension we paid it in covenant listen You did not participate in anything. But out of my love, I took you and made it as though in me, you were the one who paid that price. So not only did he die for you, you died in him. Are we together now? So in Christ, every man's iniquity, every man's um basis for accusation was nailed in Christ Paul saw this in Galatians 2 20 and he said I have been crucified with Christ nevertheless he said I live yet not I but Christ it's an exchange he died for me now I live in him in other words the day Jesus Christ dies, there is no reason why I should be alive because we are in him. So my life is no longer something I get outside of him. My life is an overflow of what I have received from him. And he so designed that from that point, hence, listen, everything I derive will be because of him, in him and with him. My joy is because of him my prosperity is because of him please listen my peace is because of him so at no point in this kingdom would I be found leaning on my own strength because the moment I lean on my own strength the judgment of the law catches up with me the only basis for vindication is to be in him this is what he said he says he that abides in me and I abide in him he said the same will bear much fruit he said for without me the word without means outside of me and everything that I have done ye can do nothing the basis of the believers victory is what Christ did on the cross but not just what Christ did on the cross because that's what a lot of people say oh I know what he did no Let's continue. John 3 verse 16. Please give it to us so that we can finish up. It's not enough to know what Jesus did. That's not where I'm going tonight. This is the part that concerns you. That whosoever believes. Believes what? No, no, no. It didn't say that whosoever believes anything. There is a specific thing you have to believe. To have life you can believe jesus is a prophet it never gives life you can believe jesus is a healer it doesn't give life are we together he says believe in him who is the him who is the him no you see you see where we miss it we have been believing in rubbish who is the him who he said god no Believing in God doesn't give you life. Who is the him? That's where I want us to get to tonight. You, you see that our confusion is the reason why we cannot manifest the reality of God's life. We believe, but what do you believe? Are we together? You can believe the shepherd believe me you will not be saved believing in the shepherd does not bring salvation are we together believe in him who is him the bible i love the way the bible puts it as many as believed in him see that brothers and sisters i am many things and all of those dimensions can give you different operations of me. 
Are we together? A child believes a father. A worker believes a CEO. A Jimmy's daughter believes in her father. She doesn't believe in a CEO. We believe in a Jimmy Adegbeye. The multi-millionaire. That's what you believe. You will never get fatherly love from that dimension. Are we together now? You may get financial advice. You may get intelligence. You may get all of this. I believe in Professor Femi. You will get the intellectual dimension. There is a dimension of God you must believe to have life. Many of us have believed him as a healer. You can be healed and still go to hell. Please hear me. Many of us have believed him as a savior. You can have, I mean, you can have a, what do we call it? A, as a shepherd. What dimension of him have you believed? I will tell you now. Ready? There is a dimension of him you must believe to be saved. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What is Lord? The word Lord means a conqueror. Are we together now? Listen, please. It's not just a savior like the one who died. He didn't resurrect as a savior. He died as a savior. He did not resurrect as a savior. He resurrected as Lord, a winner, a champion, one qualified to transfer what he has. And the Bible says, whoever believed that, listen, whoever believes in him, that name that was given, he said he shall not perish. The word perish there is not the word go to hell. Are we together? Because the Bible says, whoever does not believe is already condemned shall not perish here it is but have money but have the word everlasting is a wrong interpretation everybody has everlasting life everlasting life is life that does not end you, your life does not end you only change location to continue the living that's why we never say will you spend eternity you must spend it the question is where are we together now don't mind this my funny friend where will you spend eternity not will you spend you must spend it the word eternal life there is the word divine life is the greek word zoe i know you've heard it many of us quote it but just listen the word zoe listen let me describe it for you it's a life that does not want depend on any external impute for its sustenance it's a life that has the capacity to reproduce anything it needs within itself are we together now like you do not have to source for anything within that system is self-sufficiency within that system is the ability to be any and everything that life can become health that life can become victory. That life can become wisdom. So when the Bible says we have life, it doesn't mean we just have a new way of breathing in and out. No. Something came upon you that all of a sudden translates you. Please, I want you to believe this. The Bible says the focus in the whole story is the believing part. Whoever believes in him, the Lord, who was a savior, became a conqueror, now sits as a king. The father gave the son. The son gave his life. Your job is to receive that life. When you receive that life in reality, the Bible says certain things will begin to change. You see, the life is a programming. The moment it enters you, it deconstructs itself to different dimensions. Please listen. The life of God is not just a big thing that comes up. No, 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 no. It is the life that begins to open you up to the mysteries of the kingdom. It is the life you have received that begins to immune you from the activities of darkness. Many people have not received this life. They want healing, but they have rejected the life of God. 
Many people have come out for altar call. Father, I, I, I'm, I'm born again. I believe in you. This and that. But they have not received it. He said, as many as received. Brothers and sisters, you can reject it. Many seated here have rejected it. I give you my ATM card. You refuse to collect it. You can reject it. Yet you need what only my ATM card will give you. You can borrow money from Pastor Lawrence, borrow money from uh, Promise and so on and so forth. And I say, take my ATM card. The point is, you don't just take it and hold it. When you take the card, something will make you turn behind and begin to read and follow. You see, the life of God is not, how do I put it now? It's not like something you just put in your pocket. All right, look at this. I have this handkerchief. So we say, I have the life of God. Do you have it? Yes, no. That's not the idea of the life of God. The idea of the life of God is like a programming. Something enters you and begins to walk in you. It is God who is at work in us to will and to do. So it's working. The moment the life enters you, it's like a genetic mutation. It starts altering your configuration. Are we together now? And the Holy Spirit is the custodian of that life. When he comes... He begins to open you up to the realities of the kingdom. All of a sudden, listen, because of that life, you are now spiritually alive. You can have the sensitivity to know that life was not supposed to be like this. Why am I always failing? You will never just know that ordinarily. It takes that life to open that awareness in you. Are we together now? It's like glasses. You all of a sudden start seeing life from another perspective. No. I'm not supposed to fail like this. I can't, I can't just be taking it like that again. Something must change. No, I've seen a trend in my family. People don't get married till they are 45. I'm noticing that something in my external environment is fighting the reality of that life. And the Bible says, he who has the son has eternal life. Zoe. God's kind of life. Now watch this. Although you have that life, it takes the ministry of the Holy Spirit, please listen, to open you up to the operation of that life so that you can receive the fullness of the benefits of that life. This is where a lot of people miss it. Oh, I have life. I have life. The same way you say, I have a car. The same way you say, I have an ATM card. Can you use it? I have given it to you. Do you know how to activate the operation of that life? Do you know how to make that life work in you? We have been taught that it works automatically. No, sir. No, sir. You can claim to have the life and still die of sickness. Now, this is where Satan's ministry comes. The thief cometh not. But to steal, to kill. If you don't have anything, he doesn't come to steal. Are we together now? Satan comes. His first ministry is deception. What is deception? Painting an untrue picture and convincing you to believe it. So you believe that I do not have this life. If I truly had this life, I should not be sick. Are we together now? If I have this life, I should be doing exploits academically. If I have this life, now listen. Here is where the confusion has come in the body of Christ. There are those who are saying you have this life. There are those who are saying you don't have this life. You better fight your way into receiving it. Both of them are incomplete. On one side, you are seeing the supposed by faith. You believe, you know, you acknowledge that that life is in you. But then you are not seeing the difference the Bible said should be produced. Are we together now? This is the dilemma of many Christians. I gave my life to Christ from the day I got born again. My life has not changed. It's been 10 years. I will tell you why. Eternal life is being frustrated within you. Because you have not been taught how to release and activate the operation of the content of that life it's like buying a phone you admire it you look at it but you do not know how to work with it that was the lamentation 
of the psalmist in Psalm 82 from verse 5. He says, they know not. Not they have not. They know not. Neither will they understand. He said they grow in darkness and so the foundations of the earth are out of course. The next verse says, have I not said, ye are God and all of you are children of the most high. He says, but you shall what? Die like mere men. Listen, please listen. An heir, as long as he is a child, does what? The Bible starts by calling him what? An heir, a partaker of an inheritance, a partaker of a reality. But it says, as long as he's a child, the word child here is devoid of strategy, devoid of the ability to understand the operation of that process. He said he differed not from a slave. I can receive the life of God that contains health, vitality, prosperity, and still be under a cause. I tell you, hear me, brothers and sisters. Because we misunderstand the prophetic dimension of God's word. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. But we do not know that the communications of God are twofold. There is the prophetic communication of God. Speaking according to his realm of existence. But there is the experiential manifestation of that prophetic word. It is the nature of God to call things as though they already appear. Are we together now? Hebrews chapter 2, he put it very beautifully. He said God had put all things under the subjection of man. He said God did not leave anything left. But he said, as it is now, we do not yet see all things. Are we together now? So, you have come to answer the altar call. The life is in you. But you went back. And the exact same thing you know happens when a man is under a curse is happening to you now you went to a pastor and said pastor you said if i'm born again this thing will leave but you the person said yes is it not in your bible we all read it together now you are born again brothers and sisters but the truth is if you will be sincere you are still seeing those traces as if nothing happened to you so it puts believers in a dilemma there are those who are saying keep believing that is gone one day it will go hey wonder shall never end if you have that kind of ideology you are in for trouble and then on the other hand there are those who act as though they really have nothing so they are trying they live per day we survive today let's see how the war of tomorrow will be i know that there will be all kinds of things are we together now so although they read that there is victory in Christ. The truth is they don't believe it. They just know let's fight per day. They are the ones who suspect everybody and everything. If Sam looks at you like this is a sign that is an enemy. So they live their life with the consciousness of an aberrated perspective of warfare. And by warfare, they mean a consistent, never-ending contention. Both. Are we together? This is prophecy. But there is a place for the manifestation of prophecy. Jesus Christ has done everything he needs to do. But I have a role to play. Nobody gets saved just because Jesus died. He will go to hell. There is a response. Please listen. The idea of grace does not mean not participating. No. No. The idea of not participating in a process to call it grace is an aberration. Are we together? Uh-huh. The difference between grace and the law is what kind of participation. There is a participation that is unto the flesh. There is a participation that is a response of faith. That is the participation that brings results. Are we together now? So if the Bible says, by tithing, you open your heavens. When I'm tithing, I'm not acting under the law. I'm not trying to do something. I am responding. There is a difference between doing something to gain righteousness. 
but in any case there must be reception by faith and that in itself is a participation this looks very simple but it's at the foundation of the lack of results and the miracles that many people are are not receiving I don't want us to waste this night and just get up and see people fall under the anointing and celebrate miracles and go back I want you to live victorious if all you think is healing you will be frustrated if all you think is on my own, think God's life and all its content is the way the life of God that can become any and everything any and everything Christ has been made unto me through his life wisdom he's been made unto me strength he's been made unto me prosperity that life is the word and as the word opens up it shows me the dimensions of its operation and then I look out first to believe number two to respond everybody say believe say respond this is your part as a believer you when you respond to what you do not believe is a waste of time so the bible says whoever believes in him you receive but that life begins to teach you certain things and you respond to those teachings please listen to me part of what that life teaches you is that satan is a trickster He's a deceptive person and he will not just because you have life leave you. The Bible says he left Jesus for a season. The next time he would come, he didn't come directly again. He came through Peter and Jesus said, I still detect you. And the devil says, do not, I mean, God said, do not be unaware, speaking through the apostle, of the devil's strategy. Are we listening to me, please? Because many people get up bragging I'm not under any curse. I'm not under this. Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the Lord. That's not a lie. But you have not learned how to participate in response to make that an experiential reality. So you will still brag around and die like mere men. Are we together now? I really believe in Jesus Christ. And I really believe in his word. But I also believe in the principles that the revelation of his life releases. And my obsession is to always find out where is my part in this. Brothers and sisters, there is a part. There is a part that you have to play. Believing is not enough. Believing talks of conviction, persuasion about the truth of a person or a statement. But there must be a response. Your response is your action of faith so the bible says this in the book of hebrews there remained a rest a sabbath for the people of god in spite of what christ has done there still remains a rest and then it says let us therefore labor this is paul in the new testament what is the idea of labor push god aside no let us find out our place of response let us therefore understand the operations of the kingdom so that we will know where our place of alignment is and it says whoever labors like that there is a guarantee he will enter his rest there is a way you will align that sickness will run away from your body believe me it's not just by claiming um, you will claim and be shocked there is a way you respond Remember during our time of fasting, we're showing you different mysteries. These are all the components that are called the life of God. Right? He gave you life. But it takes faith and it takes an operation of the spirit so satan has kept many people bound for two main reasons one they have rejected the life and the solution to that is an altar call i'm going to do that shortly before we start ministering 
the second is he has kept people in delusion and ignorance never trivialize the role of deception in a man's destruction deception the first deception is that you don't need to do anything again oh brothers and sisters hear me i fear god it's a big deception as free as salvation claims to be if you do not respond you are going to hell there is always a participation that's what we call koinonia everybody say participation if you will ever enjoy the healing dimension of god's life there is a participation if there will ever be prosperity there is a participation now the participation is a response of faith god credits it as a response of faith not an addition to what he has done it's a compliment so he would see a sick body and say your faith you believed i am able to heal you you were convinced based on the report you had and now i gave you an instruction waiting for your participation you got up your faith he calls it your faith so what is your faith faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction of god's word believing is not faith no 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 believing is the first step to faith you can believe without having faith a believer is not a possessor a believer who responds is a possessor there are so many people listen to me who are trusting god for all kinds of things here i'm teaching you how to get results tonight god is not a herbalist there is a participation edge me this is a gift for you what is he supposed to do watch this, his response now he's standing up it's a sign that he believes me i can choose to hide it please sit down sir sorry i'm using you hope i'm sorry i'm just doing this game with your husband hallelujah edge me do you believe i'm having a phone and that phone is for you if you believe it walk up to me faith this is faith the walking to me although he has not seen it so he's putting my integrity to the line it's up to me to prove that i'm not lying so i bring it out if he comes to me listen if he comes to me and i say ah i'm playing he believed i'm the one who is a liar and the bible said god look for anybody who is greater than him so that he will show you he's not playing games are we together now let's look at one scripture thank you sir romans chapter 8 please romans chapter 8 let's look at verse 35 romans 8 35 just that one scripture and then we'll take an altar call and begin to minister romans chapter 8 35 okay give us from verse uh, 32 32 thank you everyone please read if you are a christian if you are a child of god this is good friday well even if you are not a child of god read i'll soon make an altar call one to read he that spared not stop who is the he now god is trying to make a statement and is tying the certainty of that statement to something he had done before it's like saying he that built this bridge in kaduna and built it excellently is about to build something so in case you doubt what i'm about to do find out whether i did that thing or not he's about to make a statement and he's saying don't you dare doubt me for what i'm about to say he that did not spare his what own son but delivered him up for who what's the next statement how shall he not with him also freely give us what this is god speaking he said look at me your healing is a lesser thing i gave jesus what is healing i gave jesus what is witchcraft if i did not if i spared my son then you will know that there are some things i can spare but i carried my son i gave him 
and now I have gathered you to give you healing. And you are asking God, this my this have been bleeding for six months non-stop. And God said, if I spared not Jesus, I will not spare anything. Whatever it would take me to prove myself, I will do it. If it means me killing somebody, I will do it. I, I gave my son, who will I not be able to kill? Listen, this is the basis for conviction. So every time the devil is trying to say, look, 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 look. Will that prophecy work? Just remember Jesus. Jesus begged the father to have mercy. The father refused. So listen, Jesus said, father, reconsider. The father said, you are joking. Stay there. And now God is saying, I want to bless you. And the devil is saying, no. And Jesus is saying, God is saying, just believe me. And watch how I will do anything it takes. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. Is there anything too hard for me to do? I am that I am. For me to do, I am that I am. Hallelujah. If the father did not give Jesus, it's like a man. Listen, it's like a man who vowed to punish every offender and he saw his wife. And the guy said, I'm a just person. And he punished his wife. Then somebody throws a and says, oh God, you know we're Nigerians. What do you think he's going to do? You say, that's my wife inside the gutter. I'm a military man. This is my wife. I paid the price for six months to get a yes from her. She's in that gutter. I don't know the consequence of my action. If you think I'm going to forgive you, listen, if it took God refusing to even give Jesus a chance for negotiation for your sake, then I assure you, whatever else it is that is holding you must leave you this night. Yeah. Hallelujah. Do you believe me? We are going to pray and say, Lord, help my own belief. That, listen, listen, listen. That spirit that makes me keep wondering, can God do it? Listen. Don't, don't make that foolish statement tonight. I, I was praying on the, tonight, before I came here, I was praying on the invitation card for my neighbor's wedding. If you know the story behind that dear woman, she shared it here, all kinds of things. When I met her, the devil was almost destroying her life. Had fibroid that was almost big like the size of a baby. She shared her testimony here supernaturally that devil of fibroid came out the way a woman gives birth it came out like that without surgery and people were saying ah um, can you marry time has gone time has gone nonsense i prayed for the card and to the shame of the devil we are dancing to the heavens on the 6th of may <laughs> hallelujah brothers and sisters your limitation is self-imposed. Satan is a deceiver. He comes to you and says, but can they really hear your voice? We are going to pray. The only prayer I want you to pray tonight is to challenge unbelief and say, Lord, I lift my faith. I'm ready to respond based on my conviction. Lift your voice and begin to pray. I have a part to play. I lift up that wall of unbelief. Please pray, pray. You are able. Are you praying?
instructions i told you your response is where your faith is there are things that should go don't just keep quiet and watch them the bible says speak to the mountain open your mouth and begin to mention them don't keep quiet mountain of financial hardship mountain of cancer mountain of mediocrity Oh, you must go, you must go in the name of the Lord Jesus. Say after me tonight, in the name of Jesus, the faith of God is at work in me. I have the faith to receive. I have the faith to believe. I have the faith to respond. Please listen. Do you know what happened in Acts chapter 4? Don't turn there. The Bible says they went to a gate called beautiful. Please let me see now, sir. Watch this. He says they saw a man who had been there and he, he, he called on them for arms and he thought they were going to give him arms. Peter and John. And he, they said, silver and gold have I none. He said, but such as I have. Listen, listen. I give unto you. What did he have? He said, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The man was there. Sit down. He was, nothing happened. Why? Response. Did he believe Peter? Yes. Did he get a miracle? No. Why? He, he could not respond. And the Bible says when Peter saw him, he said, who taught you faith? He held his hand and said, respond. 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 And the Bible says, Peter held his hand and he leaping stood. The power of God is released at the point of response. Not before. Never before. At the point of response. When I began to minister here, the Lord was speaking to my spirit. Who gave me a guarantee that the power of God will move? But as I began to speak, I put pressure. It's left for him now to defend whether he really spoke to me or not. God will not just get up and act. Listen, it was God that put this miracle service. You're leaving your house to come is enough response already. Are you listening to me? You're going to say, Lord, I put pressure on your integrity. You asked us to come. We have come. Lift your voice and pray. Don't be afraid of saying it. Pray. Lord, you asked us to come. You are the one who anointed this meeting to be a miracle service. Now, oh God, we are here. on his integrity we have come oh God that you prove yourself 
Seketa ba 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 ra da ba la da ba. Seketa praska da ba la da ba. We have come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now keep standing, everybody. Before we continue, there are people here. I don't want you to waste your time, and I don't want to waste your time. There are people here, inside and outside, in all the overflows outside. You are yet to make this decision. The Bible says this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. He said, and that life is in His Son. He says, He who has the Son has that life. Please, we're out of time. We have very few minutes and there is a lot to do now wherever you are you are saying man of god i have heard your word i have been struggling with this thing but tonight i truly want to dedicate everything my all to jesus christ or you are saying man of god i have come out for an altar call before but for some reason honestly the pressures of life have pushed me and i need to make my way straight with the lord i'm tired of where i am those two categories of people, inside and outside, I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain and come out here right now. God bless you. Quickly, please, I'll count just one to five. If the Holy Ghost is speaking to you, don't sit down thinking about it. Make your way very quickly. One. Two. Run, run like there's fire on the mountain. Especially those outside. Please, you need to run. Run to Jesus. As you stand here, please keep talking to him. Don't just stand looking at me. God bless you. Run to Jesus. Oh, win that war. Win that war tonight. This is an issue of your destiny. Koinonia, can you appreciate them? This is a harvest for the king of glory. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired of living my life my own way, mismanaging my life. On this Easter Friday, I give everything to you. Keep coming. You are saying, Lord, Easter Friday, you died. For God so loved me. He died for me. I'm tired of living a life that is not worthy of my calling. There are still people outside. Please run and catch up quickly. Quickly. As the Holy Ghost is speaking to you and say, join them. Make your way quickly. You're saying, Lord, I'm tired. Tired of habits. Tired of addictions. Run to the cross. Come running. Come running. Come running to the mercy seat. Keep coming. Hallelujah. All of you in front, in one minute, I'd like you to talk to Jesus Christ. Please, no smiling and pitching one another. This is a serious issue. Please, pray. Open your mouth by yourself and say, Lord, I, I come to you genuinely. The Lord is ministering to me that there are three ladies outside who should join them. You wanted to go and one of your friends stopped you. Please, friend, be careful. Don't stand against anybody's salvation this night. Make your way to the front, please, and join them. I'm seeing three ladies outside that the Lord is calling. One of you, your friend, was trying to stop you. The devil is a liar. Please make your way to the front. And then there are two others God is speaking to. Join them quickly before we start praying. Those of you in front here, talk to your maker. No man condemns you. The blood declares, Mercy said no. Help me. I'm not gonna let you go. I'm not gonna let you sleep away. You don't have to be afraid. No man condemns you. The mercy, the mercy. Look at me all of you in front some of you are crying 
I don't care what you have done. This one decision. Remember Jesus. Every time the devil tries to condemn you, are you not the drunkard? Tell him the drunkard is that guy on the cross. Something is about to happen to you right now. Oh yes. Oh, you slept with somebody before coming here. You say, well, I don't know what you are talking about, but I've been crucified with Christ. He looked at the woman. He said, where are thine accusers? He said, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. Lift your right hand and experience the power of the blood. The power of mercy. You just sing, there is a fountain filled with blood very softly as I pray for them. Hallelujah. Listen, brothers and sisters. Jesus can change your life. Don't stand here just making an emotional decision to go back. There is power in the blood of Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus, from the depth of your heart, say it again, Lord Jesus. I believe in you. And this night, I surrender everything. My life, my dreams, my hopes, my ambitions, I surrender it to you. I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that from today, I'm no longer a sinner. I've been crucified with Christ. And I have his life right now. Jesus has paid the price. I receive his life. And I declare that I'm a new creation. The old has gone. I begin a new journey. Satan, you no longer have any accusation against me. I pray for you. Keep your hands lifted. Father, on this Good Friday, we present these souls as trophies to you. This is a response to what Jesus did. Oh, receive these souls. Koinonia, present these souls as trophies of victory. Trophies of victory. This is the sacrifice. The rewards of the sacrifice. Hallelujah. I pray for you. I declare that your sins are forgiven. And the power of sin over your life is broken forever. Every guilt the devil uses. I don't care what it is tonight. The same way you wash a dirty cloth. In fact, the way you bring a new one. That's how the pages of your life is. He gives you a new beginning. In the name of Jesus Christ hallelujah a big congratulations to you in the name of jesus now listen i want you to do this real fast so you will join us i'm about to minister to people now and we're going to be very very fast hallelujah i'd like you to follow the gentleman there are people all around they will lead you outside we want your information please you are born again now christians don't tell lies make sure that you write your number, you write your name, just follow the instructions, no fighting, be patient until it gets to your turn. They'll have your information and you quickly come back and join us in the service. Please do that as fast as possible so that um, you can participate fully in what is happening. God bless you. Every other person begin to pray in the spirit. Rise up on your feet and begin to pray in the spirit. And say, Lord, my time for visitation is here. I won't give up. No, I won't give up. I'll keep pressing on till my answer comes. I won't give up, Lord. I won't give up. I'll keep holding on until my change comes, Lord. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I'll keep holding on till my answer comes. I won't give up. Lord, I won't give up. I 
I'll keep pressing on until my change comes. Please write your prayer requests very quickly and submit them. Let's do it quickly, please. One minute, everybody. If you have the prayer request of, of I understand that Koinonia is being streamed live right now. Can we honor God for that? Yes. It's being streamed live. We appreciate the media for their creativity. And for all our online people, we love you. The same power that is working here is the same power that will work everywhere you are in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. So please, quickly, quickly, please, your prayer request. Listen, for those of us who are just coming, I, I don't want you to think this is some ritual. Believe me, God answers prayers here. God gave us a revelation. Hallelujah. And the revelation was... The revelation of Hezekiah, hallelujah, when he took the threat letter and the Bible says he put it before the Lord and said, Lord, behold their threatenings. So please write it very quickly and then ushers, let's be very fast. Please help some people with papers next time, maybe from, uh, maybe two or three months from now, we'll try to create expectation cards so that you can expectation card leave her John leave her whatever she wants to do just let her do it hallelujah we are going to pray please quickly your loved ones please make sure the online community participate there is a God that answers prayers here Remember, we spoke about faith. Those outside, ushers, help them. If I were you, I would begin to prophesy over my request. And say, I wrote you because you must live my life. Or you must come into my life. Hallelujah. Now please begin to pass your requests very quickly. Very quickly. Very quickly. My goodness. I tell you it's like a cloud that is heavy over this place. That's why I'm saying we should hurry up. We feel the rain of your love. We see the wind of your spirit. Now the heartbeat of heaven. Let us hear. See the rain of your love, feel the wind of your spirit, now the heartbeat of heaven, let us hear, so let it rain, let it rain, would you open the floodgates of heaven? pass the prayer request very quickly once we start we're just going to move um, let me encourage those who came with sick people or those who came for healing please make sure you get ready so that when it's time we'll just do that very very quickly hallelujah scriptures talk 
about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And don't he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water whose leaves do not wither and who bears fruit we in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as it's well like as like us hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time it's going to make you attain whatever stature that christ wants you to attain thank you they don't use crutches they are working firm one of them was a senior apostle that died last year 132 serving in the ministry alive and doing well when i saw those obituaries i said there must be a grace for longevity there, there is a covenant in this lineage that brings longevity and i told the guys i said when we're coming back we're stopping here you can trust me oh the law of honor as soon as we got there we stopped and we came out we went to the women they could not understand english please quickly with a request and we told them we said we're pastors we went to minister in equity and we are going back to the north. But we discern that there is a special anointing, a strange grace for longevity. And we want them to release upon us. And then a lot of things happened that I may not say here. And then they took us to one old man. And the man just sat on his chair. When we went, they interpreted. And they told him, we came to receive that unction for longevity. The man looked at us. He said, we should all kneel down. And we got down on our knees. And this guy began to pray and prophesy. He's on record. I'm sure maybe one of these days we'll play. He was in Yoruba. I didn't care what he was saying, Ejimi. All I know is that he was speaking a language. And my spirit was receiving it. This guy kept prophesying, releasing that grace and that mantle upon that territory upon us. I said, that's right. I knew that there's no mistake about this. The moment we finished with him, honored him, sowed the seed into his life appreciated all the people we were on our way going back to the car and i felt in my spirit to go back and thank the women i went back to thank them and i saw a particular woman and they said this man 132 years this is his wife ah. when they said that i said interpret for them that we came for and the woman looked at me they can bear me witness she just tapped me and said you should follow her we followed her into a room. She just opened the door. And I saw pictures from one side to the other. She started showing me the pictures. I thought it was the wife of the man when he was in his old age. You know, like Ketura. That was the one and only woman he married. That means that woman should be at least maybe 120 years or something. Alive. These guys can bear me witness. No glasses, no crutches, no nothing. I said, what kind of grace is this? Brothers and sisters, there are mysteries. You've heard me say this thing. And when we finished, before we finished talking, we all got down on our knees. And we told the woman, she first started singing a song. I don't know what it was. I don't care what it was. This woman spent like 10 minutes just letting it out from her spirit. And do you know, I, was, I don't know if I was sharing with them. I felt as if they put a crown on my head. That's how I, as I was feeling. I knew I got this thing. Immediately she got it. I told her, I said, let's snap. I held her hands. And we got to the place. We'll show you the video. And we snapped. And I said, I'm standing face to face with a woman 100 and something. Alive. Dentition complete. Can speak. No glasses. Ah. It was you I was thinking about. I was happy to transport that grace. Brothers and sisters, we brought it. It must land on you tonight. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I was just looking, I was looking to empty everything I had. 
And I said, what kind of grace is this? We went to minister in a university called Afe Babalola University. The man himself is 86 years. Alive and doing well. In those regions, if you are 80 years, you are still a child. Believe me. Then when we were returning, I saw the shock of my life. 141 years. One, how many? 41. I saw the obituary. He just died. 141. I said, I got it. Let's see the devil that will manufacture himself from anywhere to come and take my life. No. See, listen. If you don't believe in transference of grace, you will die young. Don't you ever think it was because of the food they are eating. I didn't see any hospital around there. I just saw a church. And people, it's, you can be 190 and not be able to talk. But you are 141. The guy 132 was still serving as a man of God. You are cooking by yourself. And you died and left the wife. The, the mama tapped me. In this place, once you are 60 years, you hold crutches. What cause is that? I always believed it, but now that I've seen it, ah, there's that song that says, my eyes have seen. Don't play it. My eyes have seen it. There are many strange things that will fall today. Listen, if you care, you can receive. If you don't, when we were coming, we were in the plane, and the plane was bouncing like a football. I just remember that old woman. I said, plane, you are joking. I'm surrounded by too many mysteries. Please believe me. Hallelujah. 86 years, still a lecturer. 89 years, still a lecturer. Alive. 100 and something years. You see the women as if they are 50 something. But some of them are in their 90s, 80s, 100s. That's grace, brothers. It's not about anybody praying for longevity. There is an anointing that comes upon territories. And tonight, in the course of the meeting, is when it's time to pray that, please receive it. We need to be alive to do a lot for the kingdom. Pray and say, Lord, my spirit is open to receive everything you have for me. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. I want to pray. Why do we do this all the time? We do this because there are spirits, listen, that stand in the way of people's destinies. Don't think that deliverance is just something we do mechanically. I'm about to pray because there are people who came here. There are those who represent families. All that have tied the destinies of men down. I'm going to pray. I tell you, I sense a heavy anointing. Please, the moment that happens, I like you not don't just fall and stand up, begin to pray and receive and reject everything that is not of God. Father, your word says, Upon Mount Zion there shall be deliverance. It says there shall be holiness, and it said, The sons of Jacob shall receive their possessions. Therefore, I pray every spirit every altar every manipulation of darkness that is responsible for the tragedy in any man's life inside the first overflow second and third as you shout jesus like fire let it begin to land on people right now one two three I command those spirits right now right now my goodness my goodness inside outside like fire is coming upon people is coming upon people is coming upon people hallelujah the Lord is giving me a very foolish instruction just lift your right hand that's what I hear right hand my goodness you don't need to shout just lift your right hand. 
Leave the drums. Just lift your right hand. This, don't mind me. Let me do my stupid thing. The Lord is giving me an instruction. I see at least up to 33 people. The Lord is just saying I should stretch my hands. The moment that happens, I'm seeing like a stone being broken. These are families. Altars in families. Lord, according to your word, right now, at the count of three, all the people and families involved, I stretch my hands. One, two, three. Let it happen right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Right now. Just keep your right hand lifted. Sheba Babakata. Altars. 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 Right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Bring them out. Those strange altars. Strange altars. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. The Lord is saying he is visiting fertility issues. Fertility issues. Barrenness. Whatever it is. Lift your hands. At the count of three. As you shout Jesus. Anyone connected to you. Or anyone here. Under a spell of infertility. At the count of three. Be broken one. Two, three. Break, 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 break. Break, break. Right now. Right now. Right now. Infertility. There are some ladies feeling fire. Fire around your stomach. Fire around your womb. Fire around your womb. Fire around your womb. It's breaking. It's breaking. Is breaking. Is breaking. Is breaking. Shake it, baba, 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 baba. Is breaking. Hallelujah. Please lift your hands. The Lord is speaking to me. There are people here. Everything you touch dies in your hand. Lift your hands, please. No matter what it is, if it's a relationship, it dies. Jakatarata. Mandereto Shota. At the count of three, let fire fall. Every cause of bad luck. At the count of three, shout Jesus. One, two, three. Go, 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 right now, those altars, those altars, right now, everything your hand touches dies, people come around to help you, and they leave you, is changing right now is changing right now is changing right now hallelujah sisters lift your hands any stranger that visits you in dreams lift your hands speaking to you planting things the lord is giving this instruction every spirit husband just for ladies i tell you many people will be free right now at the count of three it's like fire that will fall on you lord let it fall every entity coming to oppress these people planting barrenness bad luck one two three take it take it take it take it let them go now inside and outside let them go now let them go now let them go now Let them go now. My dear, tap that lady for me.
Yes, that lady nodding. An angel is touching you. He's bringing a miracle for you right now. That's what I see. I see like cold sensation coming to your head. A miracle. And as it's happening to her, may it happen to you right now. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Lift your hands and begin to pray over your request. Let it rain. Please pray. Go ahead and just prophesy and say, Lord, this marks the end of it. The Bible says, Believe in the Lord your God. Pray, pray. Don't look at me. Pray. Open your mouth and pray. Shaba ba 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 da da ba da da ba. Shake it, press it, para da ba da da ba. Shopra dosko to pras kabara da paria da ba. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we turn. Go ahead and pray. Lord, my request is turned into a testimony. I must testify by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Standing upon the eternal counsel of God, the hand of the Lord itself will bring this to pass. The burden is lifted in the name of Jesus. Are not angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to the heirs of salvation? Let the ministry of angels begin to bring to pass every single request in this place. In the name of Jesus, we command the foundations of the earth, we command the firmaments, we command the waters to begin to align themselves towards the fulfillment of this request. We lift every body placed upon the shoulders of men by the anointing of God's spirit and we set these ones free in the name of Jesus, mighty and everlasting God, standing upon your promise to us, upon this altar, the heavenly portals opened in this place. We command a performance of the requests, the desires placed here tonight. In the name of Jesus, we decree the heavens answer speedily. Everyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, receive in the name of Jesus. Promotion from on high, receive in the name of Jesus. An end to demonic oppression. It happens now in the name of Jesus. Blind eyes open. Deaf ears open. Destinies moved forward. In the name of Jesus. Satanic burdens removed. In the name of Jesus. We thank you Lord because speedily. According to the seasons of life. They receive a performance. In the matchless name of Jesus we decree. Amen Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please rise up on your feet. And receive the prophecy you can. I saw a spirit. And, and I'm praying for the students now. Please listen. When I was outside ministering, I saw a spirit like bees released to produce massive failures in the exam that is being written in the name that is above all names. I pray for everyone here. The kind of performance you have never seen, receive it in the name of Jesus. Shake it, Kappa. Shake it, the kind of performance I pray from the depth of my heart the kind of performance you have never seen receive it in the name of Jesus the grace for favor where you have labored and tried and it didn't work beginning from tonight Step into a new dimension of favor. Step into a new dimension of favor. Every direction you have been praying and asking the Lord to give you, between now and next Friday, receive that direction. Receive that direction. I want to pray for business people. Anyone in business, lift your hands. 
the strategy the strategy that you need to win in the name of Jesus receive it right now may it appear to you in dreams in the name of Jesus Christ everything that has died in your hands I command it to come back alive in the name of Jesus Christ now I want to pray for you father that old Baba prayed and released upon our lives the mantle of longevity 132 still alive I pray for you please receive it me too I received it from the depth of my heart Lord you know that I wanted this not for self but for the house at 70 you are still standing strong at 90 you are still moving strong until you get to 120 no devil takes your life in the name of Jesus hear me the force that immunes people from accidents comes upon your life right now the force that immunes people from terrorism and the wickedness it comes upon your life right now that spirit that kills people at the prime of their life when they labor and about to enter it takes their lives it leaves your life forever 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 hallelujah may you see your children's children to the fifth generation believe what i'm saying i've seen human beings bodily carrying this revelation you step into it in the name of jesus therefore anyone here that death is eyeing that you will not see the next miracle service or you will not see the end of this year i don't know how the plan is going on in the realm of the spirit but i avert it right now i avert it right now the same way you will live long physically everything that is good in your life lives long with you your health lives long with you your wisdom lives long with you faithful lives long with you two prayer points quickly where you have been rejected you step into a place i've experienced it all let me tell you something hallelujah i will never forget you know jimmy knows the story in 2007 i remember that time i went to collect a loan from a bank remember the story i went to collect a loan from the bank we had done everything and then when it was now time for them to give me the loan they embarrassed me i was humiliated the same people who were helping me it was as if a charm came upon them and i looked at that person and i vowed that till i die till i go to be with the lord i will not collect loan from anybody living or dead i made that determination from the depth of my heart i said lord if you cannot honor me let me die like that i pray for someone here see listen if doors are closing against you it's demonic don't ever say it's because i don't know so 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 bad if if the person knew me it's a lie there is a man too the bible says everyone loved esther who looked at her like a garment you can wear it i pray that honor that brings receptivity receive it right now oh come on your amen is not loud enough receive it right now hallelujah the bible says you shall be as a delightsome land you know what a delightsome land is well desired in other words at any point you are seen you are invited i don't know who has disqualified you but i pray for you they may use your background they may use whatever let grace qualify you tonight let grace qualify you tonight koinonia i pray for you honor that you have never seen in your life 
from even people who can give birth to you begin to receive it strange honor in high places strange honor in high places in the name of jesus wave your hands and give god all the praise thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus whatever you have started listen something just came in my heart whatever you have started that ended prematurely because this what i'm there is an anointing for what i'm telling you whatever you start i don't care what it is whether it is relationship or whatever and it ended but not by god we put life back to it right now i say it again whatever you started that ended but not by god by a manipulation of darkness it jacks back to life right now in the name of jesus hallelujah give god praise my goodness i wish we had time i wish we had time hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us. Because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.